Hello, weary travelers. Thank you for stopping by with us as we delve into the deep-seated evils of a remote farming town in a world where monsters under the bed aren't the only things we have to fear. Before we begin, I've got a couple announcements. Uh, tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have our Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition game, Party Fell. Uh, it's more of a home game than you might believe as the party travels around with a cart of oranges to help a skeletal farmer, named after the Grateful Dead members, I found out, which is crazy. Um, those who follow our Twitter, at LawfulStupidRPG, uh, can find us down below in the panels. Um, you know we're, we're premiering, or teasing information, tantalizingly. It sucks. I hate it because I need to know more of Garden of Eden as premiere September 9th. It's our D&D game. Um, it's a sort of a futuristic D&D game where a truth-seeking AI runs all, and they're about to meet their match as the party begins to seek the real truth. Again, that's on September 9th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and every Monday after that. Um, I'd also like to thank each and every one of you who helped me and all of us realize that uh, audio wasn't working, so thank you. Um, without your support, uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we love and provide entertainment in a way for all of us to share our RPGs uh, with an international group. It still blows my mind. Um, even if you're here for the first time, welcome. You're now part of the adventuring party. All of us at Lawful Stupid would also like to thank those special viewers uh, who give more than just time and support. Uh, those who subscribe to our Twitch and donate keep the lamp on my desk running so my face isn't dark. Um, might I also mention, this is uh, just almost forgot, uh, if we reach 63 more followers to that 1,000 mark, uh, we'll, once we reach that, we'll do a giveaway on the next stream uh, for a player's handbook of D&D 5e, a nifty dice bag, and what are you going to fill that with? Unless you have a set of dice, we'll also give you that. Um, again, once we reach uh, 1,000 followers, 63 more, uh, you'll be entered into this sort of drawing thing. Um, very cool. That'll be during our stream. Uh, depends on when that happens. Um, and with that, I think that's everything, right? All the announcements are done. I think we're ready to go for Fate Core. So, uh, without further ado, here we go into the Blizzard of Bramsbury. So, everyone, the year is 1284, the year of the goddess Bruenna, and unfortunately the land of Ildrian is in, a t is in turmoil. The kingdoms of Faramor and Goldrear have been in a, in a political standoff for, for what has felt like centuries. Both sides unrelenting, and their stances of a geographical powers concerning a region to the southwest, known as Viles Valley. That's V-I-L-E, for those who want to spell along. Within that valley, winter has come and gone in the blink of an eye, as summer rears its ugly head for the common folk. In the muggy regions of this valley, what was once a cold war has, much like the te temperatures, become heated as both kingdoms and forces move to battle. However, the story concerns the journey of a small group of Mistguard and their attempt to avoid the con climactic conflict of these geopolitical powers. The Mistguard, for those who might not know, uh, are once revered and elite group of monster hunters. Um, they've become more like magical mercs in a sense, as the holes between the world we know and the Misty Vale have slowly sealed up. But as we all know, monsters will always find a way to prey upon the weak. As these hunters head south into Viles Valley, a land between two kingdoms, toward Port Ruth to board a ship and escape the paths of the Royal Squadron and the Crimson Bat Battalions, they make way for a place to rest. It is there, as they ride their tired horses, sweat dripping from their brows, as the sun beats down on them, that they find a signpost pointing them toward the town of Brainsbury. So, my missed guard, as you guys stand on this uh, crest over the rolling hills um, that you just uh, fared for the entire day, sweat beating down your backs and flicking off the tips of your nose, the first and only remarkable aspect of Bramsbury it's clear to see. It's covered in snow. Uh, it appears a stretch for two miles in any direction you can see. Um, having traveled all day, you can see the sun making its nightly grave behind the Mordred Mountains to the west. Uh, with what little light the sun provides, each of you can see a small gathering. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry about like uh, 20 or so people. Um, to the west, or to the, to the east, I'm sorry, to the east of town, around what appears to be a small stone well. Uh, to the south of where you are lies what appears to be a long trench in the snow uh, that, that spans from probably at the bottom of the town all the way up to these deep, dark forest um, that is to the north. Um, from the town, uh, sort of past it almost, you can see a large plot of land. Uh, the cornfield dried up and frozen over in this strange snow that's only starting to reach your, your face as you look up and see there's just almost like a big cloud over this town. Um, there are two buildings in that farm in that farm area um, situated there. 
beside a rather large tree with crystallized leaves. From within, the from within the town itself, I mean, you see there are about four roads that reach into this small square. Um, you see flickering candlelight within several wooden buildings as the people of Bransbury seem to beat back the rigid cold that has started to solidify the sweat to your chests. Though the town itself is rather small, you can't make out much of the village inner workings without going closer. As your nostrils start to take in this sharp, cold air, um, best way I can describe it, um, where your nostrils start to burn almost. Uh, Mist guard, what would you like to do? And I guess we'll go around and what do we all look like as well? We'll, we'll start with uh, Silas. Silas, you're probably looking over the town with your with your uh, gifted eye. What do we see? Yeah, Silas, uh, average height, maybe 6'1", uh, kind of bushy, scraggly brown hair, uh, eye patch over his eyes. Um, Though he was traveling through summer weathers mostly, uh, he's actually wearing uh, clothing quite uh, quite comfortable for this winter weather. He wears heavy heavy clothes that covers most of his body outside of his face. Um, and the first thing he'd see is he'd kind of look at the snow, pick it up, kind of examine it, and see if it's real. I mean, because we're in the summer months, he wants to know like if if the snow seems. Uh, fake or if something something off about the snow itself mm. um so i think you, you pick it up and we see it uh, are your hands gloved or not yeah okay so in your gloved hands sort of leathers um it seems like it's it's real snow you you would have encountered real snow or not but with your eye i think you see a little bit of um this uh, aura around the snow and all of you can if you kneel down towards the snow you can all see it um this, the mist seems to permeate this entire area within the snow itself emanating out. Um, how, or, uh, Silas, since you were the first one to look at this snow, what does it look like whenever this uh, mist is sort of permeating out, outward? Does it have like a specific look? So rather than uh, melting in your hand, it kind of plumes up. Like if you're, you see your breath, it, mm -hmm. it, that's what the snow does as it melts rather than just kind of melts in your hand. It's kind of this mist permeates rather than turning liquid, it turns gaseous. Cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, I think uh, next to you walks up um, familiar friend, I guess. Um, you guys aren't really super close friends, but you know yeah. of each other. Um, is uh, the witch, Asera, who walks up and is sort of ha messing with this snow a little bit. What do we see? Uh, Lissara is rather much shorter than Silas or Marjorie. And she is about five foot tall. This kind of skinny, scraggly looking woman with doesn't look like she's paid much attention to her personal appearance in a good time. <laughs> um, she's got brown hair, pale, pallid skin, and she's sort of crouched down, sort of poking and pouring her way through this snow. And looks up to Marjorie and goes, There's snow here? Yes, this, right? Yes. Yeah. Nope. You're you're 100 right. It's snow. It's it's weird snow, but it but it's snow. Hmm. Do Do you need a jacket? I have an no, extra. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. There's something. There is something in this town. And I think at that point, uh, we hear some. We hear the crunching of some snow as you guys are um, still. Some of you still cresting over these mountains on your on your horses. Um, Sir Edward Cross, you dismount first. Uh, we're next to Luther Hawkins. What do you what do you two look like? Well, sir, Sir Edward Cross. Covered head to toe in this kind of heavy black leather cloak. Gloved. Uh even has like a like a detective hat on. And then, <laughs> like a Sherlock Holmes hat? Like no, no, like a American detective hat. <laughs> okay. That's not better, but okay. <laughs> like a fedora? And then, as, kind of, kind of a fedora. Sure. Not, not, not the hip, hipster fedora, but. Uh, and then sunglasses on. <laughs> okay. Like Oakley's. Let's go Oakley's. All right, sure. <laughs> and uh, from the little bit of skin that you can see, it's, it's more like a, almost like a black smoke is emitting from those areas. Okay. A weirdly creepy description of that. We'll gloss over that. Luther, what do you look like? All right, L Luther is walking uh, beside uh, Sir Edward, and he he is a uh, a little 
uh, a younger boy around the age uh, 12, 13. He has these little beady eyes hidden behind these huge round glasses that he wears. And he's furiously scribbling down in his notebook. And mm. it's also chattering his teeth. He's obviously not dressed uh, for this weather. He has uh, ch- uh, some shorts on. His arms are also exposed. He's n- n- wearing a very thin shirt. And he goes, D- D- D-. and he also has a, a, a detective hat, but obviously not as nice as Sir Edward's. It's very, it has Worn. a couple holes in it. <laughs> He's he, he probably found it in a, in a dumpster somewhere. <laughs> Perfect. So these are, these are your mist guard. Um, <laughs> great. Mist as, as in mist. <laughs> yeah, that was planned. <laughs> uh, as you guys are on this hill, um, looking out, um, you have several points of interest if you'd like to go towards any of them. But as you guys are um, the snow reaching you, for, I need everyone to make some physique rolls for me, please. As you, as you resist this strange mist snow um, that's coming towards you, I think you, you need to get a, a fair, so get a plus two um, to sort of resist the effects of, of this. Any differences for people wearing appropriate clothing? Do you have appropriate clothing? Mm-hmm. Silas does? Then you can skip it. Goodbye. Okay. What everyone else, what, what everyone get? <clears throat> I think I rolled the right one. <laughs> for physique, I'm noticing negative twos and then a one. Um, I got so, negative. Uh, Sir Edward, what did you get for your physique roll? Do um, I just roll have... a regular roll if yeah. I don't have? Okay. Mm-hmm. Negative one. Cool. So each of you uh, on your coach sheets underneath the mild consequence, I need each of you to write chilled to the bone. Now there, as this snow and cold atmosphere starts to rise up within you, um, you find yourself shivering, um, not like a regular northern winter. It, it seems to hit, strike you much quicker. Um, no. The quickest way to get rid of this, you immediately know, is just to get some furs or get near near fire. Knowing that Lasara isn't going to change her mind after being offered, uh, he would he would wave Luther for Luther Luther boy, come come, come here. Uh, you're you're, you're going to freeze to death, and I give take out another another cloak and wrap him up in it. Oh, well, little, thank you, thank you, Mister Silas. Oh, no, stop with that, Mister Stuff. You got it, Mister uh, Silas. <laughs> Great, Luther. You can go ahead and mark off that uh, that frigid to the, the frigid to the bone uh, for us. It's just this this the the warm of this cloak starts to embrace you. Um, we're we're just monster. At... We're, we're monster hunters, and none of you have furs. Come on, people. It was summer. Well, that's fair. So, I forgot that's my beautiful. winter cloak. Aren't aren't you <clears throat> like? A detective? Like, don't, aren't, aren't you supposed to remember things? That's kind of your thing, is remembering things. It's finding things, not remembering things. That's Luther's job. And he forgot his that. jacket. Yes, this, this call does seem to come from out of nowhere, it seems. Magic. It's very strange. I, Dark, I pick up a dangerous magic. And, like, sprinkle it in front of me, and as it falls, it, like, mists and goes back up. And just, like, this is an interesting... And, manifestation of the mists. I haven't seen this one before. Hmm. I think you, you, I think we can we can see the snow. It seems to be like, be like in a cycle. Once it hits the ground, it sits. And then eventually, probably about a minute passes, it rises back up to the clouds in this vapor almost that Silas described earlier and saw. Like a strange perversion of the of the water cycle almost. Let's, uh, let's find some warmth. Maybe... Um, Maybe a job. Maybe find out what's going on here. Yeah, let let's get to town. Cool. You guys sounds like you guys are heading to town. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you guys walk in down the only road that you can, um, as you pass by this uh, well to your right that people are gathering around. You don't get close enough, but it looks to be just a standard stone well um, with rickety beams holding up a shoddy roof, um, snow piling on to- top of it. And even going down into the hole itself, um, you see them. One person walk up to it, drop something within the well, and then turn and join this group again. So each one taking a second to go up to this well and drop something in, paying it no mind. 
you turn towards the town. And walking on one of the four clear roads of the small village, soft crunching of boots and snow beneath you as you leave plops of holes behind you. Easy for tracking. Uh, you arrive in what could be best described as a central square. Uh, the buildings surrounding the southern and eastern parts of the square are older, um, hardly considered buildings at this point. Um, they have basic roofing, uh, though the roofs are falling in on themselves, uh, and walls, those with walls in the first place, um, suggests their age and at one glance uh, might suggest the economic state of the residents here and that they struggle to find food. Um, to the west, Lies buildings for more established folks, it looks like. Uh, the more mercantile district, more stones and woodwork buildings. Um, might be a place for an inn, might be a place for a, a butcher of some sort. Um, and to the north looks to be more uh, as if the southern shoddy buildings have been well kept. They're still wooden, they're still meager, um, but might be where sort of the, hard, the working class people are. There were some several crates and barrels spilling out of these alleyways. Um, to suggest they're bringing back and forth, trading a whole lot from this area. Um, and that's really about it as you walk forward, sort of glancing at several of the uh, abandoned houses next to you. You notice that some of them don't really seem to have people living inside. Um, you some shutters <laughs> clank behind you um, as you walk past, probably keeping the wind in or keeping you out, perhaps. You are strange in, in this town. Um, but as you stand in this square, snow fresh snow covering all of it. There's a silence. You're able to hear every building, it seems like, but it's quiet. It's almost like this is the heartbeat of a dying town. And as you make way in it, for a direction of where the nearest tavern might be, probably in, in the stonework buildings, you're stopped by someone screaming. And they let a, a, a guttural scream as uh, someone's thrown to the ground, um, probably to the north of you, a couple feet, maybe. Your eyes shoot in the direction. Um, and you see a balding man uh, in a thick coat of like pack, patchwork almost. Um, maybe uh, browns and blacks. Doesn't look like it's from one animal, it seems like. Uh, behind them is like a small crowd, probably like seven people at most, all men. Um, each of them with like farmer's tools, like pitchfork, torch. It's a mob of boys and girls. Um, the balding man just uh, screams out, Bruenna, take the Crimson Battalion's blood in your honor so that you may bless this land once more. And you see he has a dagger in his hand pressed to this sort of frail looking red haired boy's face. Um, he, the, the guy, the, the one on the ground coughs for a second and says, <coughs> I'm, not, I'm not a spy. God, I could kiss my, <coughs> before you can even start finish, there's a slash across his throat as he's kicked to the ground, crimson starts to leaking from, from his throat into the snow, marking at maroon. As this man turn, the man turns to the crowd, and yells out to them, "Bruinak spit fire at Godrear. This is their doing. Stand fast with your king, and our goddess will smile upon us." And you hear several hears from behind them as they sort of raise their their mob weapons, mob items that they got from the mob <laughs> store, um, and they head back into this sh sort of shanty town to celebrate a fresh a fresh kill for their god. Before you're able to act, uh, a man approaches. He's got a thick mop of black hair. And a green cloak pulled over him uh, with like freckled face. Uh, he walks over to whoever's leading. Who would be leading at this point within this town? Probably. I... <laughs> which, which way? Whichever way he points to Silas. <laughs> cool, Probably Silas. Down for you. <laughs> All right, cool, Silas. Um, before you even to turn to address your compatriots, uh, this man approaches you and says, "Hi, I saw you coming from the hill. Wood spreads fast from outside us. Follow me." You have to know what you've walked into, strangers. So he turns and heads towards these uh, well-kept wooden buildings. Um, so it disappears into an alley pretty quickly. Um, if you want to follow, you can, but it's up to you to decide. Um, sure, yeah, sure. Let, let, let's follow the uh, the guy who came from nowhere and just told us to follow him. Yes, that seems perfectly sensible. Okay, if, if uh, Lasara says so, uh, we're doing it. You got it, boss. Before following, uh, is anyone visiting the well still? Uh, yeah, there are still a couple people at this well. Um, looks like they're right. staying, but once they seem to drop something in, they return to this small group. And in like groups of twos or threes, they do start to leave, leave this well. Right. So before following them, I'm going to take a nice shiny penny out. Okay. Uh, and as I approach the well, like faking, well, I'm going to drop a penny in. 
but I'm gonna use my stunt, uh, Memory Leech, and uh, gracefully touch the arm of one of the people that just dropped something into the well as I approach it. Okay, so as you approach, um, the commoners that have gathered around this well are bundled up in crude coats and furs, much like the man you saw before. Um, some of them are sh- kind of shivering, but you do bump one of them. Um, and using your stunt, you draw forth from, it's a, a sort of a motherly matron type woman. Um, the only information that you really can gather from that, from her memories, um, recent memories, is her dropping what seems to be a large rock into this well. Uh, and it clanks four times before, before boop, plopping into this water um, that resides pretty far down below. Um, and you get, you, get, you get another flash. Um, all you can hear is uh, screaming echoing within her mind of other people's voices, several fires lit. Um, and you hear several, my baby, my baby, as they're running. Um, and then it's gone in a flash. Uh, but as you approach this, um, this well, um, you, you didn't know you could recognize a smell. Um, but it's, you, you can smell chilled flowers almost in women's hands as you walk past. Um, you get up to this well just as a teenager, throws a rock down into this well, and it clacks four times into nothingness. And wind whistling through these wooden posts um, and this, this caked in snow. Um, you can see it's mis- this well is missing portions of wood from it. And as you draw nearer, you get a, a chill up your spine, different from the snow chill. It's one you recognize. It's per- deep, per- deep perversion of the mist, I think is the, is the phrase I'm looking for. Um, and you sense it coming deep from within the well and slowly, slow, ever so slowly rising up to greet you and growing in strength. But you walk up to this well with this coin in your hand. I flip it into the wall. You flip it in, you hear, ding, 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 go. And you wait a second before turning. You do turn and you hear, as you turn and you see water start to rise up and almost start spilling out from this well. And you hear, deep from within this well. I didn't do it, I swear. The Watch three of you. Across. <laughs> the three of you just see this happen pretty quickly. What, what did what did you do? I'm running. That's an evil one. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, uh, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> so, so Edward, you start running back to your group uh, at this at this what, square. What did you do? Did you wake an evil monster from the well? Hiding behind Silas, just like peeking around him. Go, go get it, buddy. <laughs> Push him forward a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to inspect one of these rocks they're throwing down there. See if there's okay. Any odd about them. Okay. Um, go ahead and um, ro- make an investigation check for me, just to see if you can find anything interesting. Do I'd I say, to... what's that? Oh, I was just waiting for you to. Um... Say what uh, I yeah, so uh, to find anything of note, get just get a one, just just get a plus one. That is a six. Jesus, mother of God! <laughs> <laughs> you know this rock so well. Yeah, you do. He's like um, Charlie Brown. I got a rock. Who's that rock? Remember so, this rock from when you were a child? Because you got a six, and you got a, a, a way more than three higher than the difficulty check. You get a boost, sort of a little bit of information uh, to help you on your quest. So you pick up one of these rocks. Um, nothing really of note, honestly. There just seem to be rocks. Um, why they would throw them down this well, it <laughs> fucking beats you. Um, as you place it back, you do catch sight of someone walking past with a rock of their own. And you see written on, on the rock and uh, almost like etched in, um, you see a name. You see Lenny Strauss written on it. And pretty clear as day, easy to see, as it's one of the larger rocks. Um, and as you place it down, place this rock down and move to pick up another one, you I, I think you, you hear one of the women nearby, sort of uh, tears streaming down her face, very uh, old, elderly woman, stringy blonde hair. Um, you, you catch the end of her conversation of, it's not fair, it's not fair. My young Michael, he was... <laughs> I didn't know him very well. He was my grandson. I should have, but he's gone now and I'll never get the chance as they sort of walk away. 
Interesting. But with the well, it's still sort of bubbling over at this point. Um, Silas, uh, Lissara, Sir Edward, you guys are staring at this well, sort of bubbling up. Um, you hear a... <coughs> you see a rock sort of... <coughs> and plop out of this well and land with a few thuds. Do any Does anyone around the well seem to react or does it seem like to them this is normal? Uh, actually, you guys caught it as they're all turn as these people were turning away. Um, so it looks like Sir Edward Cross threw a coin in the well just as everyone was leaving. So they haven't really paid, they haven't really drawn any attention to it just quite yet. I I'll go pick up that rock. This that's <laughs> out. Okay. No, no. You don't know where <laughs> that rock has been. It could be an ant, a clue. It has ants. You know what? You pick up the rock. It is slimy. It is disgustingly like it's covered no, no, in this. No, come on, strange We've membrane almost. No, um, no, no. <laughs> what does it taste like? What does it taste like? Um, honestly, it probably tastes like lilacs. It tastes of lilacs. Here, you lick it. Don't. She holds out the rock to other two. Why, why, don't, you, why don't you don't, you be, a, don't be a coward? Try it. Uh, okay, Master. Why don't you, no, don't don't do you don't have to do everything he says, Luther. I I, I take a little bit of the slime on my pinky <laughs> and I just taste it. Great. It, it's like you're ingesting lilac perfume almost. It's a very strong lilac scent. Um, but it's laced with best description it's laced with some snot it, it tastes like it's got that same sort of um viscosity as well are you happy are you happy you did that yes this is this is uh very interesting thanks for letting me describe some snot guys i appreciate that <laughs> um but lasara as you look over you can see also etched in the stone you see the name uh martin mordry martin mordry why does that seem familiar i've I'd like to try, and I'm still figuring my hand around fate. That's okay. To use one of my stunts. Okay. I'd like to try and use the stunt, uh, the True Dreamer one, which is, I have seen this place. I know, I've seen, I've seen this well. I know this place. I know, mm -hmm. I think I know someone. I know, I've seen someone in this town. I know, I know they can help. And okay. I'd like, try and I think it's contacts yep yeah so you're gonna roll contacts uh, against a yes. fair plus two opposition okay Watch this, this could be I've thought about this I've planned for every so do I I don't need to add anything to mine nope no it's just a, it's just a, yeah. the straight contact roll you meet it <laughs> so whenever you meet it um you succeed at a minor cost um so it's, it's what you wanted but it's not quite exactly um, and you do know of only one person within this town, technically. I've seen them. You have seen part of them. <laughs> Their name is Petruna von Klees. And their location, you know fairly well as soon as you see it. They're within the well. I know someone who has the answers. If she's down there, she's in the well. We need to talk to Petrona. Petrona will tell us the answers. I'm going down the well. Petrona Matata. <clears throat> Let's go to, we need to, we need to go down the, the well has the answers. Down the well, we find the answers. You, you rarely wrong. I mean, scary, but rarely wrong. So I start walking back towards the well. <laughs> Just running from it a second ago. I, I, Maybe she grows lilacs down there. I didn't. I didn't listen to Lasara once. Mm. I'm not doing it again. I'm so, always right, except when I'm wrong. <laughs> those are words to live by. As you guys approach this well, um, you see the water has started to fade away a little bit. Um, but Lasara, as your first to approach, 
you see it sitting probably about a, a foot maybe beneath the the edge of this of this well um and you, you peer in it looks murky um there's a bit of coins you can see sort of glinting at the bottom as well as you peer over it looks like a bit of seaweed is on the top um and this sort of uh, pale yellow seaweed and as you peer over try to get a, a better look at it maybe to maybe to pick it up it moves and you, you hear <sighs> As a, as a severed head spins <laughs> and stares at you, it is its jaw is wide open. It's missing several teeth. It looks like a, it's a, a corpse. Its sun, its skin sunken in. Um, it has no eyes. Its yellow hair splayed out. The <laughs> Sarah. As it stares, the best it can stare up at you. Oh, you can hear its voice as well. Yes, it is I, Enchantress. <laughs> she spits out a rock, sort of. <laughs> Sarah just glances back over her shoulder for a sec towards Silas. Uh, yes. Uh, this. Do you live here? Is it nice down there? It is where I reside now for a century. Uh, her, her one eye sort of looks up at you, and you, as, as she's like turning in the ripples, it does just go to move to her other eye socket almost. The Wishing s- wells. Is this what wishing girls normally have in them? You don't need to roll. This is not what they normally have in them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to make you do that. I mean, the last well I found had had a horrible bat creature living in it. It did. I remember that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, that good. I was put here for using mist. As, as she says the word mist, some mist actually does sort of come out of her mouth and disperse into the air. What did you use it for? Same as you. Bramsby is cursed. Her eye sort of goes back to the other socket. I knew it. I knew it. The snow. How long has it been snowing for? Mm, five months. As you, as you say that, you see a sort of a teenager almost in age, um, Sir Edward, so start to approach what looks to be like two rocks. He, he walks over. The, what are you guys doing at the well? Just, uh, we're well inspectors. Uh, yep, that's a well. Oh, I could have told you that. But there seems to be something living in it. Uh, yeah, the go- the goblin does. What, what, um, and that's not weird to you? Well, everyone's got a goblin from what I heard. I don't have a goblin. I mean, I have my friend Lissara here, but she wouldn't this by no means a goblin. Oh. All right, well, I'm just going to throw these rocks down real quick. Excuse me, inspectors. Uh, why do you throw so, the rocks down there? He, he walks up, as you're asking, he walks up. Rocks for rocks to punish, gold to thank. As, as he gets up and holds these rocks up, he sees down into this well and sees this severed head and, <laughs> and drops the rocks and they <laughs> splash into the water. You hear, you hear, um, you hear Petruna sort of no! <laughs> go back and into those waves. As he, <laughs> That's no goblin! As he runs back into town, just disappearing somewhere into this shanty town almost. Petruna sort of disappears from the waters and then <sighs> fools. <laughs> And she spits out a rock that sort of. So this is 
what a goblin looks like. So, no goblin. They write the names on the rocks of someone they want to punish. Did I understand that correctly? You asking? You asking Petruna? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> The ones on the rocks are gone. They think I did it. As she says, did it, like one of her teeth comes out and <laughs> oh, so they're, bounces so they're off the pun- rock. They're punishing you with rocks. Yes. I'm assuming you didn't do it. Correct, Silas. Thank you for calling me Silas, and I look at Lasara. Who's Silas? We've been we've been over this. Audrey, do you know someone called Silas? And she looks at Silas. You're lucky I like you, Lasara. You're the only person, only person who who's allowed to call me that. Look to Luther. You got that, Luther? Oh uh, yes, boss. <laughs> uh, uh, just, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Wood. Silas is fine. <clears throat> I, Silas. You know what? You know what? I command you, as your boss, to just call me Silas. <laughs> Got it, Silas. It's a step in the right direction. So Petruna sort of What is it you seek? Witch. Monsters. Right, so the cause of the curse. Tell her. Oh, also the cause of the curse. <laughs> Generally monsters. And also gold. Yep. I've seen people throwing gold down there. Have you got some spare gold? Pick one. Gold. Sir Gold. <laughs> we, fight the, we fight the monsters. Source of the curse. Oh. <laughs> to know the curse, you must take mine. And she's sort of lulling into this in this water, in and out. Her words coming out in complete sentences, but covered by this water reaching over her mouth. Do I have to live in a well? Nope. No. You must feel the fire I felt. Is that fire? Literal fire or metaphorical fire? B- both. <laughs> <laughs> Seems confused by that question. <laughs> Caught me off guard with that. And and if I feel the fire, you I will f- will find out where the source of the curse is. Yes. All right. Great. <laughs> awesome. Oh no. As soon as you say, "All right," um, you see her mouth sort of. <laughs> crack open to its full extension um, that her gaping maw is revealing the, the deep inside of this well, water spilling out of it a little bit. And from it, you see her her own sort of essence, a mist-like in appearance, come out of her in this dull orange and swirl around with a <laughs> and disperse into Lasara's skin. Lasara, as soon as it does, you feel this intense heat well up inside of you. Um, almost from the very core, right underneath your sternum is this point of origin as it spreads out, filling up your entire body. It becomes uncomfortable for a moment and then it resides and leaves you um, not in pain, but uh, it's like you have a splinter um, that you can't can't seem to get out. I need you to take the moderate consequence to feel the fire within. It's not doing co- going well so far. No, it's not. <laughs> are, are, are you okay? Um... That uh, but in that flash, you hear Silas's words, they sort of echoey. And you catch glimpses of Petruna's fate, this fire that she felt. Um, you, We see in quick flashes, she arrived, she was in the enchantress uh, to Eldric, the flame of Faramore, one of, one of the kings a century ago. Um, she'd come to, to Bransby as sort of like a, in your situation, just passing through. This is a town people just pass. They don't go here. They wind up here. Um, and as she was using mist, the town grew scared and accused her as a witch, not knowing who she was, and burned her, decapitated her, and threw her down the well. And as soon and as you're left with this image of her 
corpse being dragged away from the well, her head falling down. We're back in into this uh, scene with you next to the well. And all of you watch Petruna's head. Uh, thank you. Just burst underneath this water. With, with a few boop, 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 bubbles po- poking up. And the Sarah just sinks down to her knees with, beside this well. It's like clutching the fact that it's like feeling this fire within her. And it's just generally a, a worse day than average. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. You're somehow cold and fire. But I think if you're cold, you can't be on fire and cold, so remove that mild consequence for me. Oh, see? This, this solved that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, we did it. You, uh, you, you have some uh, strange friends, uh, Basara. Uh, I am her friend. That was not her friend. Uh, they don't like witches here. <laughs> that was, uh, did you see that? That was real. Yes, that was real. I could feel it. That was definitely real. Uh, I didn't really answer anything. Uh, almost on cue, you hear a boom, 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 boom. This sort of bubbles p- popping up. The, wa- the well starts to fill up once more. You see her head come out of the water, but it looks rejuvenated. Um, she's very fair skinned. Um, if you were. Uh, noble, she'd be very beautiful um, in term- for a common folk. Oh, um, hello there. She has a sort of a square jaw, but she does have nice fem- feminine features that most nobles would take to, um, and bright blue eyes. Replacing that singular eye that she had before, you're recalling now that it was a brown eye. It wasn't even her eye that she was using. Oh. Um, as she, her head comes up, there's no blood. The waters are clear. She stares at you says, thank you, Lasara. I cannot speak of the curse, but I can give aid in some other way. A prophecy of sorts. And as she, as she speaks, this water starts to slowly trickle out of this well. And you see it start to start to drag her, even. She, and her, her image flickers for a second. I don't have much time. The four forgotten welcomed to freeze within the cursed town of Bramsbury to find a girl before morrow's noon. The mantle is where they seek the boon. Her support runs through the snow, defeating each will let you know how to end the Atla King's reign so that Bramsbury and its people will live again. And as soon as she says that, she disappears into this well, the well receding back down into the ground. The waters of it, not the well itself. Leaving Silas. you alone. Silas was not paying attention. He was just staring at the de- pretty decapitated head. <laughs> <laughs> For Let's do a quick rewind. Uh, Silas, we're in your vision now. As she speaks, all we hear is a wah, 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 And then she disperses. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, L- Luther was uh, furiously trying to scribble down what she was saying. Okay. I say you, you, you managed to mark down everything. Um, so I'll go ahead and put that in our um, in our little chat just for you to reference later because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna repeat it line for line every time. Oh yeah, I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> but that's what you got. So what would you guys like what would you guys like to do? As a child? Child missing. Wait, where did that man go? Was there a man here earlier? I swear, I saw, was there a man here earlier? Green you just kind of leave that man. <laughs> um, we, like, I, was, I wanted to follow Stranger Man, but we went on this whole well excursion. And uh, I, I had a dream. Dreams are important. What? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, using my investigation, mm-hmm. can I figure out? where the man went from where I saw him standing previously, because, you know, snow. Yeah, sure. Um, go ahead and roll and investigate for me, please. Um, you'll be using your... Honestly, you just be looking at the ground and trying to find out his foot tra- his footprints as this whole town is covered in snow and you leave behind your own tracks. So go ahead. It, it'd be pretty... It'd be a decent detective, so I get a two. Five. Five. Great. 
Um, so you very easily find him. You know the direction he's going, and you know what house he's in. Um, and because you got a, a three higher, you get a boost. I can't really think of a boost at the moment, though. Um, so I, I'd say think on it, each of you, about what might help in the situation regarding this um, or anything in the future. Um, but we'll go ahead and continue as Sir Edward, you look. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's a weird blip. <laughs> you froze. We lost you there for a second. Jim. Oh, did you really? Good. Just, Good. just a blip. Oh, really? Weird. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So we, we, uh, I follow. I'm like this way, this way, guys. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I, examining the footsteps. Go this way. Nope. That, that way. Going. Get to his okay. door. Uh, I'm like, hmm. I look under a rock. Find a key. That that's the unlock the door. Walk inside. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Underneath this rock, you, you find this old iron key, and with a tunk, tunk, rrr, the door creaks open. It is pitch dark in here. Um, there is no flickering candlelight. There is no windows open to let in some of this uh, sunset that, that is now occurring on Brandsbury. Um, but you guys are in this northern district. Um, on our little play area, it's going to be uh, that purple area in that in that section. Um, but you guys, as you guys enter. You, you get a pretty pungent stench that reaches your nostrils. It's like um, best described as leaving a roast beef out and letting it spoil. I have a stunt called Danger Sense, where yep. I uh, have a pre-natural capacity for detecting danger pretty much mm-hmm. in without being impeded by darkness or concealment. Mm-hmm. Am I sensing danger? No, not 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 exactly. You're you're sensing a little bit of your own unease. It's a bit of a creepy situation, but not not nothing willing to kill you. It seems like. All sure. right, I found it. Have at it, and I I give uh, Silas a little nudge into the room. So we're just we're just walking into a strange. Okay. This is not what the we first did time now. You've done it. You invited us. We walk into strangers' houses all the time. <laughs> At least I do. Do you have the mayor's house? Hello, um, we're here. Sorry for not following you right away like I wanted, but uh, we're here now, not at the well. <laughs> um, you hear some quick footsteps coming in from this darkness as this man with a mop of black hair and a green cloak comes up and, oh, great, I thought you were gone too. Sorry, God, don't really have time to be out. At, don't want to be out at night, really. Have a seat. As he, he holds this candle and you watch him and light this um, small candlestick so it's illuminate this room that you're situated in. Um, there's, there's a table, there's some chairs um, and some cots. In particular though, there is one cot in the center of the room that looks freshly made that he was even, looks like he just got out of. Um, but he goes, he walks over to this table, puts the candlestick down and pulls the chair out and sits into it. He looks to all of you. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Doodle. Doodle? Mm, yeah. Doodle? Doodle first name? Uh, Yes, first name. I'm sorry. For what? Everything. And also your parents. Doodle. Really? Don't mind her. Oh. She, um... Uh... That's all right. She, I mean, that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's, a, very very that's a strong family name. I, I get that a lot, yeah. Uh, I think uh, you are. Oh, thank, thank you, sir. Um, as, you, as he pulls off his cloak, you get a sense he's probably about early twenties age. Depending on how old each of your characters are, we didn't really go, we didn't really cover that. I'm imagining all of you are fucking old, <laughs> except for Luther. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nothing but he, about that. He he pulls up to this table and says, "Thank you, sir. Uh, sorry to." Be a bit shady uh, with our interaction, but uh, as I said, you don't really want to be out at night. Things have been um, uneasy for the past four months that I've been here. What happens at night? Oh, uh, people go missing. That creature flies around, keeps us all here. That's why I brought you here, actually. Unfortunately, you had the... Oh, yes. Creature flies around? 
Yes. Um, it, I only see its shadow. Uh, well, I saw it once, uh, three months back. He was um, golden, I think, with long wings and his long white neck. Um, it, like a swan? I don't really know what that is, but sure. Or is it like a duck? It looked more like a duck. So duck feathers. A stretch duck. Oh, yes, yeah. Than that. Yeah, it was a swan, actually. But I, I saw it. I came here. I'm just a I'm just a hunter. I was just passing through. Much like you probably. Um I tried to leave next day. Uh, along with one of my friends, and well, this thing came down roaring, honking, and it killed them. I didn't have time to get it out. Every time anyone tries to leave, they all they all make the same fate. I'm sorry to say you're, you're here now with us. The cast of Bramsbury, it seems like. How often does this uh, swan show up? Every night. About what time? As soon as nightfall. So in like half an hour? About, yeah. Keep, keep in mind, it, it is, it's out during the day too. Not sure how. Never seen an animal it like sleeps. it. It never seems to sleep, no. Hmm. Okay. Silas kind of like puffs his chest out, kind of like his voice gets a little uh, deeper and... He's like, well, we're the Misgard, or part of the Misgard, you know, <laughs> the, the famed Shaman. This, hey, he brought he brought us here. You're your Misgard. I think we can help. You're hey, your Misgard. We're all Misgard. It is one <laughs> person. Listen, I'm I'm not like these folks. Uh, Misgard, you freak me out. You really do. I don't much like your kind anymore. I don't think we had a need for you until I came here. But don't go around telling people you're mist god. They'll... They don't really take kindly to anything with mist. Well, you've treated us kindly so far. That's why I felt comfortable revealing it. I was hoping you had any food on you, actually. Do I have any food on me? What's your resources at? <laughs> uh, uh, zero, probably a straight roll resources. Yep, go ahead and do a straight roll resources. For food at this point... <laughs> Go on coin. You're gonna need a three. What'd you get? A one. A one. Awesome. So you have a choice. You can either just fail or you succeed at a major cost. So if you really want to, you can have some food for some major cost. Who knows what that might be? Not eating today. <laughs> uh, sorry, we're we're a little low on resources ourselves. That's damn part of the reason we're here seeing if we could find some work whether whether it be food for service or a little bit of coin no oh, you won't find much coin here <laughs> well i mean you will but no one's really it's not really part of the uh currency anymore we trade food what about lives i saw some uh oh that yeah <laughs> that was um that does, that's been happening recently. Uh, I guess this war has finally reached us. If any if any armies get here, I'd like to see them try and face that thing. But just don't go around saying you're part of Goldrear and we should be fine. You're not you're not part of Goldrear, are you? I don't know. <laughs> you probably you probably aren't. The ninety percent chance you, you aren't. No, so I don't, don't think we're part of that. We're not part of Mishgard, okay. Uh, anything we can say we're part of. Fair more. And that's that's really about it. That's fair. And none of us are witches. <laughs> right. None of you are witches, right? <sighs> yes, that, that is not correct. Here. Great. Um but, yeah. Um best I can tell. Uh, you're stuck here now. I've just found this empty house. I think the couple died or something. Oh, so you're a squatter. Yeah, Nothing he easy. sort of point, points over to the, the small cot in the center. It's like, yeah, that's where I've holed up. No one seems to come knocking or anything. At least no one really do. wants to come knocking. At least you can do is clean up the smell if you're going to stay here. Oh, sorry, I've been out. Went down to the old trench earlier. What is that trench? 
It's the old uh, sister town Bramsby. You saw it on the way in. Yeah, that big trench that goes back to the forest. Just a trench? I mean, is it... Is it... Oh, it's more than a trench. Uh, if you're here, you might as well know our culture. Ours, it's mine now. Uh, it's spit and trench. You go down there, have a few pints. See if I, who can spit the farthest. Maybe have a brawl or two. Distance competition. Yep. Yeah. You should clean. Well, I'm the best marksman that's come across these lands, so you know maybe I'll find find some time to. Uh, Marjorie, to... Marjorie, we don't have time to play with the trench. We have a monster to hunt. Maybe the monsters in the trench. Oh, that'd be good point. That'd be terrible if there's a monster in the trench. People are there right now. I'm sure they're fine. I'm sure they're fine. We should go check. And we, the, we should go. <laughs> so that's much. I actually said there's a monster in the trench. I, I'm, I'm hypothesizing. Is that the right word? Hypothesizing? Is that, is that the... For this term <laughs> period? That, that's a new vocabulary well, I was asking, term. I was asking Sir Edward. Hypothecating. <laughs> Hypothecating. Gesturizing. Well, if people are gathering at the trench and the monster wants to kill people, I guess that'd be a decent place to go. I just wanted to spit. That's really all I want to do. I, 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 there might, probably not a monster in the trench. Just, just spit outside. It's cold out. It'll freeze. Where does the smell in this place seem to be coming from? Is it just all of it, or the smell? You mean like this? The, the, the rotting, like rotting meat. Smell. It's, it's on. It's on this table. Um, on the table, you see. It's just a, like a. A dulled wooden plate, and set on it is this half-eaten um, sort of carcass, half of a pig almost. Um, it looks to be like it's been cooked, maybe a few days ago. Are you going to taste that too, Lis- no, 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 no. Uh, don't eat my why food. Would, why would if you leave it here? Where, where am I supposed to put it? In the snow. <laughs> don't not on that cursed snow. Don't eat the green bits. Green bits. I can't really see. He sort of takes this oh, candle and bits. holds it over. Oh, I was too late for that. So he places the candle down. More will be leaving you if you eat that. Your soul. No, no, no. Not your soul. Just saying. <laughs> you may find yourself in the privy for a long time if you eat the green bits. Well, I can't really be beggars, can't be choosers. Aren't any more animals to hunt around these parts? You might be begging when you're in the privy f- for... I'm not I'm going to stop. Eat what you want, I don't care. Let's go to the trench. Great. Yes, yes, uh, let's go to the trench. The spit the spit and trench. It's the spit and trench. And ask people about the monster. Uh, uh, be yeah. careful about who you mention. Some people have lost to that monster. Ask people about the monster sensitively. Right. You're getting uh, it. If you need anything, or if you have anything, I'm here. Please. I'm hungry. As he sort of takes a little bit off this pig and... <sniffs> so I said sort of chew on it. Um, it's kind of slimy. You can even hear the... <sniffs> as he chews it. What does it taste mm. like? It tastes like pig. <clears throat> Well, be, 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 be safe. Right. You two, watch your backs out there. Watch the skies. Edward, uh... <laughs> Edward turns very, and leaves. Very quickly, turns and leaves. <laughs> he's, 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 hey, this is, he, there's no information here to gather. Leave the key. What we've gathered is there's a monster, a monster. and people are dying, and it's a ghost town now. Mm-hmm. Okay, to the trench. Leave the key. We could keep it. And I put it back the under the rock. House. <laughs> you put it back underneath the rock? Yeah. Okay, so with the... <laughs> replace that key. Do you guys head into the trench, it sounds like? Great. Yes. Um, I think Luther would probably know the way. Um, Luther seems like the type who would have drawn out a sort of map 
um, of this town. Um, yes, I believe it's straight that way. So yes, near the big trench. Pointing. You guys have to from go through where this. we came from. Yes. Shan- you guys have to go through this shanty town. Um, very, very good, loser. And then as you pass by, you do see um, that body of that accused uh, of that accused crim- crimson battalion member. Um, that spy is gone. All that remains is the blood, and there's a large, um, uh, like pit almost where he was. The snow has been beat back. Um, Does the snow slash like evap like the mist seem to be reacting any differently with the blood? Mm, no, it looks like it's it's just soaking it up, okay. um, reacting like like normal snow. Normal. Okay. Um, but I, as you're watching, it is it is seemingly filling this hole in pretty quickly, as the snowfall is continuous, um, the sort of flurry. But you guys pass by pretty quickly, unless you guys want to do any investigating or anything of the sort. Otherwise, we'll skip past. These commoners don't understand the mist at all. <laughs> death, death only feeds it. Yes, exactly. And, and we continue to the trench. Okay. Trench. <laughs> so we guys follow you. Um, the camera sort of uh, shoots up. We see this. What lies of this trench? It's probably there's a small group there, about five or six people, um, spread out. Five or six people in a clump there. Uh, seven people clumped further north. Um, they seem to keep to themselves. Mostly all men uh, at this trench. Um, but now that you're getting closer to this to this supposed spitting trench. Um, you get the feeling that if circumstances were worse, this might be the perfect spot for a mass grave for Bransby. Um, it's wide enough that you can fit each of you side to side. Um, though, you, as you near, you dare not try. There are sharp rocks at the bottom of it. Um, and there are even bodies of frozen livestock lying within. There's a pig um, sort of that's been cut. And it looks like the people have been cutting from it to feed themselves. Um, and there's even a few horses within. Um, dried blood is tainting the white snow beneath your feet. As you crunch, that's what snow sounds like. As you crunch beneath the uh, <laughs> top of the snow, um, the stench coming from it—it's it, faint. Uh, just enough to trigger your senses, though, as you recall the odor. The mist permeates this trench as well. Pretty strong too, um, stronger than the snow itself. Um, uh, recalling, it's a bit like the like the well. Uh, although something isn't dwelling within the trench, it seems like something frequents the trench. The trench, maybe. Um, the mist and what lies within you. Um, as you never would have guessed, seems to permeate the entire town now. It's like an invisible fog that suffocates all that reside in Bramsbury. As you guys near, um, you're sort of in between these two groups, these two clusters. Um, to your right, there are a couple of rowdy, drunken men, sort of, ah, I guess, I, Leon spit farther than me. Hi, oh, you bet ya. <laughs> and you see, you watch this spittle just <laughs> blop down onto the snow. And to the right, you do see there are a couple women sort of just sat on some rocks. Um, so just talking in hushed tones to each other. Do you think you can spit farther than than them, Silas? Hope to find out. You got this. And I and I uh I approach the the women sitting on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, no, hey, no, no. I walk up with him like to be okay. gentlemanly, of course. <laughs> I was just going to ask them questions about the swan. And I'm there too as backup. No, you're you're spitting. Well, if you're both going, I should come along as well. Our very knowledgeable <laughs> women here that I want to admire their knowledge. He does a lot of that. Yeah, You know Silas has a lot of admiring of women's knowledge. He's very but, appreciative of their knowledge. Luther, let's let's go spit. No, no. Uh, uh, all, all right, boss. Can do two things. So it sounds like we're splitting. Uh, so we're spitting. Silas, Silas, uh, or spitting. Silas <laughs> and Lasara are heading to the women. Uh, Sir Edward and Luther are heading towards the men. The um, exact opposite of what should be happening. <laughs> yeah. right now. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll we'll go with the women group first, and then we'll go to the men. Um, Silas, Lasara, as you guys approach, there are about three women sat on um, these sort of frozen rocks, sort of muttering in hushed tones. Um, each of them looking pretty hearty. Uh, they're country folk women. 
um, but they're bundled up in these mis- mismatched coats as well, these furs. Uh, as you approach, they sort of, Shh. can we help you? I give a little little bow. Uh, evening, uh, uh, my lovely ladies. Um, we are we're travelers. We're looking for a monster. No, <laughs> because we are explorers documenting strange creatures. My associates over there are some of the most renowned researchers in the world. Uh, I am here. Point for- over to Sir Edward and and Luther. <laughs> yeah, as they're about to spit. Yeah. Yeah, I think you see over there as they're approaching, you see one of the burlier guys go, Who are you? <laughs> Spit in as you guys, as Sir Edward and uh, Luther start to begin that conversation. We'll see that in, in a minute. I'm I'm here for protection. Uh, my my uh, friend here um, is also a researcher of a different kind, but we heard there was some strange happenings here and we were sent to investigate. I was wondering if you'd be able to provide any information. Uh, she starts to sort of hyperventilate for a second. She's starting to think um, one of the sort of burlier women sort of, hush now, Marjorie. She sort of goes over. She looks over at, at the two of you. She knows your name. <laughs> I wrote it down before you even gave me your name. I'm sorry. Oh, that's fantastic. No, that's great. Fate. <laughs> or oh, maybe, maybe she's one of them. She's out to get you. She knows your name. This could be a trap. Two people, two people can have the same name. <laughs> that seems fake. Uh, <laughs> she looks to you and says, I'm Leone. It's a pleasure. It's nice, nice to meet you here, but fortunately you're staying here forever. At least until death takes you. Um, can you say that a little less ominously? Like, hey, we're here to help. Like, cool. Um... Any better way to greet some strangers who just came in? We stopped doing that after two months. We did. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm not even it. from Bramsby, but now I'm here with Marjorie. She's, you look over Marjorie, sort of, <laughs> sort of crying into some handkerchief. Looks worn. What is it you want to know? Just we're here to help. Oh, good luck with that. It's almost, it's almost. Have you night. got any food? She sort of her eyes sort of shift back and forth. No, we're fresh out. We, we knew this. We knew this, Lasara. It's worth asking. Oh. Is there anything about these creatures that any rumors that have been going around? We know. We kind of know the time they've been sighted, but any rumors about where where they might live or uh, bring back their prey that we could um, try and seek out? Oh, we know where they're going. We know where they're coming from. The forest. That's where they're coming from. Has anyone been into the forest recently? Oh, yeah. Not recently. Not since month three. Bramblebriar Wood is not really a you go and you don't really come out these days. Uh, um, I don't... But before? Before? Was it fine? Before what? The snow? Yes. Before the snow. I apologize. I, I will admit that we were dropping eaves a little bit and heard rumor of a missing child. Um... Hmm. Only one. That's strange. One, maybe, been... maybe uh, one recently. <laughs> Actually, she sort of, she stands up. Um, come over here, please. She sort of motions you away from this crying woman. Do you follow? She kind of just yeah, yeah. Feet away. yeah. She gestures. She. Um, I didn't really have to talk about it, about Marjorie. She lost her sister to that. Uh, one of those things. Um, five months now. Child every week. One's gone. Soon after the father, and then the mother. Time one by one, whole families. Who? It. No, them. Them. <laughs> them. There's the thing that keeps us here. She sort of points up to the sky. And um, a thing that hunts the fathers, and a thing that hunts the mothers. One for night, each. A night we hear a 
hear a humming. I'm not sure what that is, but it frightens most of us. Have you seen it? Uh, which one? Any of them. Any of them? Only the flying one, once or twice. Can you point us in the direction of who went, the family of who went missing most recently? Or is oh. their family gone? You're looking for the Cromwells. Uh, they're, they're the largest farm up north. Hard to miss. Will they be amiable to people like us coming questioning or offering help? They're not really amiable to much. Imagine knowing he'd be dead within the next few days. Everyone dies. Please don't mind her. I suppose. She doesn't take to the cold well. Uh, as you say that, you look over, Lasara is sweating. <laughs> <laughs> See, she's sweating in the cold. Um, it's very warm uh, out. I, I suppose. Look, I don't have much time. I don't like being out at night. Um, don't, don't do what you need to do. Uh, don't uh, put yourself um, in any more risk than you're comfortable with at our expense. Uh, good luck. Try I, to find I, lodging. I bow. Your your help is as great as your beauty. Uh, I should have given you a look and and give like a shit eating grin. Like, go to the trickster's chalice if you want lodging. Leon, we're going. Marjorie. As you you walk, you look over. One of the burlier men is like, "But all right, Leone." She walks over. Uh, um, Leon walks over to his wife, Leone. Um, Marjorie gets up along with the other woman that was sat there, um, and they start to leave. Meanwhile, during that conversation, Luther, Sir Edward, you guys approach these men as they're sort of bumping into each other um, and uh, hawking loogies, spitting into this trench. Um, each of them has a flagon. Um, looks like it's being emptied or has been emptied. Um, All right, so as as we're approaching, <clears throat> me and Luther are like discussing the best physics behind spitting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what does that sound like? Now you got to tell me what it sounds like. What? Like Luther is quickly taking notes, and I'm like, no, no, higher, 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 uh, initial velocity, high, uh, ah, increase the angle. Uh, no, no, no. Of course, of course. Not that high. Not that high. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, At this point, you hear, Who are you? <laughs> oh, uh. This sort of this burly man with a bald head and a pretty large, bushy, dark gray beard. Um, he looks fairly young. It looks like his beard just has several snowflakes in it. Sort of salt and pepper ish. We're just uh, passers through. We heard this is the, the place to be. Hear that, boys? Couple of fresh meat. He looks back and several of them. <laughs> fresh meat, then. And so they sort of start to crowd around you a little bit, getting into your personal space. All right. And, uh... <clears throat> Tell me, you got any food on you? Got a, uh... Serving or two? <laughs> yeah. You probably didn't pay the tax then, boys! As Leon sort of gestures over to two of the other men, they uh, not as barely as Leon, but still pretty decent. They're farmers. Um, so walk over to you and start trying to take one. You try to take your hand on you on either side. Do you let them or do you do you resist? <laughs> Are you checking to see what you're good at and how you can resist? Is that what you're doing right now? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! What what are we doing here? I thought we were here to spit. Spitting's over. You. Stick. Sort of looks over at Luther. Oh, hello, sir. What you got on you? Uh, I, ha- I had the stove pad. Uh. Oh, uh, do, do, uh, w- w- do you happen to know anything about uh, the, the this flying creature that's uh, 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 <laughs> going through town? Uh, taking your uh, uh, your townspeople. What you just what? And see, he comes over to you and grabs you by the what's this part of their shirt called? The scruff of your shirt, sir. Yeah. We'll call it. We'll call that. Um, grabs you by and pulls you close to, close to his face. See, don't you go mentioning shit you don't know. 
and spits over your shoulder. Um, some of it does kind of glob onto your shoulder, um, sort of the residue of it. And he <laughs> lets you go, sort of pushes you back. You see? <laughs> sir, sir, there's there's no need for this. How about this? If I can outspit you, you just let us go. If not, <laughs> I'll get you, I'll give you my rations. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll go first. He he sort of goes over to this um, log that's sort of been placed by this trench. Seems like the the starting point where you can stand, like the first point you can stand. He goes up to it and and he lets just this large globule spit. I gotta have to, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll. Let's see how well he does. <laughs> it's so backwards. Great, awesome. Um, so the spit travels, um, I, I guess, in terms of percentiles of, of uh, quarters, um, one hundred percent being the furthest part of this trench. He gets to about 20 twenty twenty percent of this trench. Let's see, <laughs> try and beat that then. You should you should angle it uh, a little higher. That's what uh, Master Cross said when we were going over here. Yeah, you want me to angel what now? Oh, the, the 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 angling of it. You you have to uh, a- aim a little higher for. Are you gonna spit or what? I'm gonna have to beat your friend. S- see how this is done. Now, yeah, uh, I do some preliminary stretches. <laughs> you stretch to spit. Ugh. I I back up about like five feet to get a running start. Okay. I run up. I plant my foot on the log, and I'm gonna auto fail. Okay. Great. Take so a fate point. Sure. And just look right onto my chin. Yeah, take go ahead and take a fate point as you you run up and um almost kind of skirt this log with a <laughs> it sort of dribbles down your face. See <laughs> Boys, we got a joker. As he slaps you around on the back, leaving it automatically a sort of handprint on your back. That's a hearty slap. Oh. Um, he grasps your shoulders. <laughs> I like you. I thought I, I thought I hated him at first, boys, but this one, this one I like. Yeah, anyone who makes us laugh at times like these. <laughs> sort of lingers on your face for a moment. Is he? You know the drink. So he lets you go and goes over to his, his friends, grabs a mug, and. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you want to know? Luther. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's just, he was staring at me for a while. I was like. <laughs> uh, at, uh, how, how big is this uh, flying creature? Uh, flying creature. You, you mean the feather mane? Uh, the, the uh, golden one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, bear size, maybe. Took yes. Roy yesterday. Daft fool. He knew the markers. Hmm. Markers? Yeah. Wait, how far you can go before you before you end up food for that thing? One of the, one of his friends like hmm. lost me mum to that thing you did. Yeah. How much did your mother weigh? Oh, I don't, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of his face drops. <laughs> <laughs> his face drops. You see, uh, I don't know, a couple stones, maybe. Maybe. Ah, very strong creature then. <laughs> right. What'd you say you were again? Who you were? Just passers through. Uh. All right. Oh, uh, our bets. And I, I take out uh, half of my ration. This is all I got. <laughs> okay. As he grabs it. Here you go, Roy. He, he goes back to, to hold it to this um, man who lost his mother. See, it's for the kids. Hello, sir. Thanks, Leon. He, po- he pockets it and says, Oh, I should get going. Um, wife won't like I'm out so late. 
Oh yeah, go on. Come on, boys. He uh, Roy sort of turns and with two of the other guys leaving four behind, tries to go back into the shanty town. Uh, Leon looks to you and says, "Sorry, it's uh, you know we get a little don't get much entertainment or fun around here anymore. Um, just." Keep away from the markers, you'll be fine. You're here now. I'm Leon. You find me in Old District if you want. Speaking of, then we're having myself another spit as he gets up off the ground. Um, and as as soon as, as you this this woman that Silas and Lasara are talking to, you hear her go, Leon, time to go. See, uh, but I was gonna spit. Oh, all right. As he walks over. Um, to Leone and leaves. The, the remainder of the guys sort of looking, looking up and down, going, "Suppose we get going, then, yeah. All right, yeah, sure." They they turn and sort of drunkenly wobble their way uh, away from this spitting trench, leaving the four of you behind. As the sun has now started to set, and the last gleams of light uh, leave your vision, plunging Bramsbury into pretty much darkness as the moon shines overhead. Not quite a full moon, just a con the cusp of a full moon. Did did you win? Did you win? Yeah, I, I won. Oh, well done. <laughs> you're you're not a great liar. What uh, what's that dribble on your chin there? It was the from the projectiles. Initial velocity, just explosion. Uh, uh, back, backsplash. <laughs> Got it. Look. So, uh, if the rumors are true, the the monster should be showing up any. What happened to my watch? Oh, your what? <laughs> Look, is that monster watch, watch, watch. the least of our concerns? Isn't there's other monsters? There's more monsters in this town than you know. More monsters. Yes, what? there's more monsters. I think they said a hummingbird. What, what kind of monster? They take children, and then they take the families. Like, every week, they come there, for them. Sounds like there's a specific monster for each, too. Possibly. Mm. And also there's a f- flying monster. But they took the child of the, the Cromwells. The Cromwells? Cromwell. Cromwell. Well, I think Cromwell's the plural of Cromwell. One Cromwell, yeah. lots of Cromwells. Luther. Uh, lots of Cromwell. From, from from your readings, have you come across anything that would have been a large swan that eats people? Luther, mm. roll lore for me, please. Oh. Um, to know this, I say. You've got to be a pretty good scholar, so just get a three. That's all you need to do. There we go. A five. Great. Um, so, you know, uh, gathering your information um, and uh, flipping back a few pages, you know kind of what it, your best guess, um, although you need to see it uh, to know for sure. Um, but all the qualities of it fit this one. Um, it's what's known as a feather mane. Um, I will... Uh, Show it to you guys, <laughs> or I will, I will read you one of the um, sort of aspects of it. Um, it is known as a loud hunter uh, with reach and a very thick hide. Um, you know, it looks like the body of a lion. It's got a large mane of fur, um, sort of golden tannish brown, um, very large claws, and actually stands bipedal. Um, with sort of these webbed feet, and from its neck protrudes a, a, a long, thin swan neck, ending in like this, um, this like goose head. Okay, I, I relay that to everyone else. Um, they're not very stealthy. They are super loud. Some of them can grow wings. Some of them can't. I must take this thing down. Oh yes, but at least we should be able to see it coming. Thank you. Thank you for the information, Luther. Yes, you're Me. very useful. Well done, Luther. Um, and Luther, you did succeed. Um, and I think it's... I think we need to know, Luther, how do you kill a feather man? Hmm. 
domain. Uh, I believe I, oh, I, I, I think I read somewhere that you have to, um, if a feather main uh, eats the, it, its own tail for, <laughs> it, the tail has some, uh, uh, it stores some kind of, kind of toxin in it. If it eats his own tail, it won't be able to, uh, it'll be paralyzed and then we can kill it. So, like, does it need, does the tail still need to be attached to its body when it eats it? Like a weird I don't believe so. Self. Okay, so <laughs> I, believe, I believe you can, it can, uh, you can cut it off. It, it grows okay. back if you, if you cut it off. Hmm. Great. That's how you kill Featherman, guys, in case anyone wants to know. Make it eat its own tail. But the tails go back so you can collect tails. <laughs> you can. Um, they it store this very potent uh, venom that it, it doesn't actually use in its kills. It just naturally produces it and stores it in the furs. Um, it's not really liquid. You just have to let it eat some of it, some of the furs from its tail. That's really messed up. So, as you guys come to this revelation that a feather mane is one of the creatures hunting uh, Bramsbury, as you guys turn towards the town, um, who has who? What's everyone's notice skills for me, really quick? What, what's everyone's three. notice? Plus three, one, plus two, plus two. Luther, what's your notice at? This is plus three. Plus three. I okay. Have, I also have the danger sense. Great. Um. So Silas, Luther, Lissara, um, as you guys are approaching town, you hear a um a very loud sound that sort of echoes throughout the town. You hear a... Sort of starts to echo. And it's, it stops you in your tracks. And as soon as it ends, you hear a... <gasps> this scream erupts from somewhere within. It's loud. Um, and it echoes. And several doors <laughs> slam open. Um, as you hear, another one! Another one's been taken! As people are running out of the streets. Um, so Edward Cross, you don't hear the sound exactly. Um, all you see is the aftermath of something happening. Um, I'd like to start running towards the noise. As you guys are run towards this noise, um, we're going to go ahead and take a break right there. Okay. Um, so make sure to stick around. We'll make stop sure right to see there. how exactly you guys are going to stop all these monsters from hurting Framsbury, even if you can. So uh, with that, we'll be back in about, we'll be back in 10 minutes. To kind of stop time. is that? <laughs> we'll be back in 10 minutes. Thanks guys for watching. We'll be back soon. Bye. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Blizzard of Bramsby. We meet our four adventurers for Mistguard as they are um, running towards the town of Bramsby as uh, kidnapping has just happened. Um, supposedly. I don't want to say anything one way or the other. But we greet the four of you. The camera's following you from the front as you all of you are running. Um, some of you sweating more than others. Lasara, this heat <laughs> rising up as you're exerting more energy. Um, as you guys get towards, follow the sound, towards Cotton Garden, this sort of um, established stonework, wood-enforced um, section of the town of Ramsby. You pass by one of, this, one of these small um, sort of blacksmith areas. You also pass by a two-story building, one of the larger ones of the entire town, with a swinging wooden sign of a tipped over chalice um, with little bits with little gems in them. Um, colored gems, not actual gems. Um, and you, you catch a quick glance of the reading of the sign. Uh, it says the trickster's chalice. Um, Dodal, the hunter, mentioned it as an end. So did uh, um, so did Leone. But as you run past, uh, the image of it, a blur as one of the doors opens. Um, someone coming out like, what happened? As you quickly run past, leaving them in a snow dust cloud almost. Um, you find yourselves in a small sort of square of cotton, of cotton garden. And in it, you see there are uh, seven people or so um, out. There is a woman uh, with what might be her husband. They're in, in each other's arms. And several people with um, like rusted swords, basic shields, and some torchlight. As they're all sort of looking back and forth, you come up on the scene. What do you guys like? What, what would you miss guard like to do? So there's an air of like, so they've, it, we just heard the scream like a couple of minutes ago. Mm -hmm. 
It's, it's no not a big town. Around. Less than a minute. It, yeah. it didn't take you very long to get here. And no one around here is like chasing after anything or like. No, it looks like they're just they're, they're trying to find out w- what even happened. Well, I look to the others and sort of motion forwards like. I was told I shouldn't ask the questions. No, that's probably a good uh, idea. Very good idea. Uh, Edward uh, <laughs> kind of moves forward into the middle of the scene, mm-hmm. assesses the scene, sees like kind of an empty location where possibly someone should have been. And uh, can I roll an investigation to see? Sure. Just to, or to kind of suss out what might be happening? Suss what, what's happening slash what direction maybe she was picked up from and uh, okay. went. All right, go ahead and roll investigate to get information that might help you in this case. Um, a lot of people have come in here. You've got to be a pretty great detective, I think. You've got to get, get a four. I ain't got shit. <laughs> you got a one. Great. So you have an option. You, you can succeed at a major cost, or you can use a fate point. You can use fate points to sort of bump you up. You can use a fate point to reroll, or what have you. It's up to you. No, got nothing. Got nothing. <laughs> uh, All right. As you sort of look around, you don't really see any tracks or anything of the sort. Uh, I'm going to investigate and the snow and see if there's any. Uh, patch of it that seems like it's been disturbed other than like by a footprint okay go ahead and roll investigate for me to find something like that again you have to be a pretty great detective get a four hey a six great so you just manage just barely manage you you guys watch luther sort of bend down for a second um as sir edward walks up you hear several you know where it went what was it i saw it It was a mass of shadows as they're all talking to each other luther you bit you bend down and sort of look at some of the footprints try to find something out of place you don't the only thing out of place in this is that there's nothing out of place you don't see any markings of a monster having set foot on the ground um at all all you see is the small footprints of what might be a little girl um heading away from the area snaking towards the the northern part of town um in that general direction but as you do near you catch a little bit of a wisp. Um, you think you think it's hair for a second, sort of a horse hair, maybe clump of it. But you bend over to, to pick it up, your hand whoosh, goes right through it, and you try it again. And at this point, you you get a little bit closer, and you see that it is almost like condensed darkness. Um, that is sort of moving like hair would before it <laughs> dissipates into mist itself, as sort of disperses up into the air to add to the snow fall once more. I approach uh, Luthor. Interesting. Oh, yeah, so I was looking over there. Yes, good find, Luthor. It's a good find. <laughs> Obviously. Really good at Thanks, Master Cross. Obviously. Thanks to your guidance that I could find find this. I thought you were going to ask questions. Welcome. Uh, these people and don't know anything. Are there still asking. people here? Yeah, there's still people around. The, the the woman is like, my baby, my baby. I went to go check on her. <laughs> yeah, the, the man around her is, is, don't worry, dear. We'll find her. We'll find her this time. They're all sort of... Um, How's your child earth? been kidnapped by monsters? Oh. Recently. Uh, yes, it just just now. The, the man sort of steps forward. Um, he's got a um, very large coat over him, a, a, almost as much of a mane as you can have. That sort of trails down his chest um, and slicked slicked back black hair, um, almost slicked back with like fish oil maybe, and clean shave, five o'clock shadow almost, and a, a scar over the right of his eye. See, looks over. Yes, uh, just just recently. Do you yeah, have you seen anything? Uh, yes. B- Betty says she saw some sh- shadows or something. Not that goose thing that we saw earlier. Um, one of the ladies like, yeah, it, it was looked like a. Just like darkness took her. Oh, you see that too. Uh, shadows took, so, wait, she got swallowed by shadows? The man sort of looks over to Betty. She, 
I didn't really see it swallow her. It more just followed her out. Or it follow, or she followed it. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, how, how, how old is she? A, a daughter, Catherine. She's, yes. she's not but seven. So an easy grab. Got it. What? I'm just meaning that the monster didn't need to be strong. Did you? Opportunity. No, I, I stepped my board. Don't. Excuse, excuse my compatriot here. They are, they're of, of science and their, their social manners are not the best. I apologize. Um, my, my name is Silas. Uh, we've come from afar. Um, heard about your town's plight and we wanted to help where we could. Great. First, you can start by finding my damn child. And I can find her. Was there any direction that you you saw her head or this darkness head? As Betty. Crazy as it sounds. Uh, Betty's eyes is like she's staring at Lysara. She says, "I could find her." Sort of like coming out of nowhere in this conversation. <laughs> she, uh, uh, she, 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 she went north towards towards the forest. Towards, towards the wood, towards Bramblebriar. Is that where you... Luther, you, you were looking... Did you see... Did you see yeah. any tracks for a monster? I... No tracks for a monster, but I do see the uh, small footprints heading towards the forest. It's, well, I can't find the child. But if the monster has a child, I might be able to find the monster. Hmm. Well, mm-hmm. do it then. Find it and we'll kill it. Is, I said some is of the it, men like, ah. Uh, well. Oh, right. First, uh. first, 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 first. Do you promise not to burn me alive? At least kill me first. What do you mean? Why would we do that? Um, no, because... We've heard some things that you don't really like strangers. She 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 takes rumors way too seriously. She's strange, all right. She's good at tracking. She's a good tracker. She's of the woods. Uh, she has she has some uncanny abilities to to yeah, track. Speaking them. of tracking, do you have anything that belongs to your daughter that we could uh use to track? Uh, Those air quotes really uh, helped. Sarah. <laughs> she, he 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 turns he turns towards um his wife as she's <laughs> But, but it's, it's the only thing we have. As she has this um, sort of like plush bear in her grasp. Um, it's got beady eyes and a red nose sort of painted on. So oh, thank it. you. We <sighs> might we might return this. And I, uh, I, I hand it to Lisa. Uh, Sarah, so is, I need a table or some floor space. What for? Aren't you supposed to track it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for uh, tracking. Lasara, uh, not, not, not here, not, oh. not. We need a private room. Private room. The yes. process. The thing. Uh, the pro- to the process the, the information that we have gathered here in this uh, opening. Uh, well, fine. You can use my. You can use our house then. As he he walks over and poof, opens up his door pretty quickly, um, letting loose this flickering candlelight coming out and casting some shadows onto the snow before you. You guys enter in. It's a very meager home. Um, there are a few paintings. It's a bit nicer than the other homes that you've entered in before, um, as they are in this sort of stonework region of, of, Bram, of Bramsbury. Um, but you guys enter, and he directs you back towards his daughter's room, it looks like. Um, very small bed. Um, several stuffed animals around. Um, terribly made. The kind that you would find creepy now. These are, these are them. Um, sort of lanky arms. Um <laughs> strange beasts look like they've made her she, she, she's made them herself almost um so he walks you over and says well, um you can use this just don't don't touch anything or ruin anything else this let is perfect you, thank you let me know if you need anything please just f- find my daughter i'm gonna go out see he turns and you you hear him grab something off of his mantelpiece almost above this crackling fireplace um he grabs it and it's a sort of glinting silver sword and he sheaths it. And, Come on, man, let's go. So he runs out and pff, 
slams the door behind them. Where didn't, are they going? Wait, well, didn't uh, the the pretty lady from the well, or the pretty head from the well, say something about a mantle? Something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sara, we, we don't have time for this. Uh, start. Uh, Okay, okay. She just takes the bear, just kind of pops it off to one side. Like, <laughs> was that useless? <laughs> and like, reaches around in like her bags and pulls out like a collection of what looked to be a collection of like finger bones. Oh, okay. And a piece of chalk, and like, roughly like scribbles a circle, like on, I guess, a bit of floorboard or. Okay. Grabs. Picks up her collection of bones, rattles them together and goes, Seek the monster that lies within the shadows. Mists guide me and lead me to it. Wherever the monster that has taken this child lives and scatters the bones. And I would like to use the casting bone stunt to try and investigate and find where this monster might be or Great. Dwell. Go ahead and roll investigate for me with that plus two. Um, to find this monster in particular, um, going to be pretty difficult. You've got to get a five. Oh! Holy shit! Oh. <laughs> Nap! Great! An eight. So, um, that was almost the perfect roll. So, uh, sorry, whenever you locate a monster, do you see them in your mind or do you just have a divine sense of where they are? I'll say, I'll say, see them, okay. but just add to the general monster seeing. Okay, cool. Um, so we watch this camera slowly, it does that Spielberg zoom in, um, you know, that the background gets farther away as the face gets closer. Um, I wish I could mimic it. Um, but yes, yeah, it's that we, we zoom in on Lasara's face, and soon we're greeted with blackness. And we see in your vision, sort of this murky vision. Um, and we see this black tendrils almost coming out um, of where you are. You're seeing through the monster's eyes, it seems like. And you're hearing this <laughs> clicking and clacking as it's moving. God, it's terrifying. <laughs> um, <laughs> and be- before it, um, you don't see a child. You, you just see the blank um, canvas-like path of the snow. But it does sort of shift back and look back, and you do see this small, frail child with long black hair and a single braid um, in her nightgown, um, holding holding tight one of those stuffed animals that she might have had in her in her room, as she's walking, just <laughs> shivering a little bit, um, following this creature as it <laughs> moves back. And seems to be heading towards the forest. You know pro- approximately where it is. It is just just north of um, the Crumwell Farm now. Not too far off. You can get there in about two minutes if you run. Um, and because you got a you got a eight, you got three more. You know exactly what monster this is. Um, I think you more than anyone uh, know this monster in particular. Actually, um, you know this is appropriately named a click clacker. Um, you know, they are composed of pure darkness and shadows. They're only corporeal parts of them, and I'm using the term right, um, that they can interact with are their teeth, um, that are long fang like, um, that are they're constantly chippering, ch- uh, clinking and clacking, uh, and their hands, which are skeletal in nature. Um, and they are known as their high concept is they're the shadow demon of nightmares, as one is. Uh, but you do know where it is, and you guys watch as Lacera sort of <sighs> comes out and sweat, now audibly beating down. You're now d- pretty much drenched um, from this curse that you've taken upon. I take my sleeve and like try, like wipe off her forehead. What 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 did you what did you see? Nightmares. I mean, and other than other every other time. So like, how, the, uh, the click clacker. It really is the click clacker this time. I you said that. You said that the last time. No, it's the click clacker. I saw the child following it through the snow. We can get there. It's north of Cromwell Farm. It's not far away. We can catch it. We can. We can find it. 
It is. I swear. This time. This time you. for real. I believe you. I believe you. Right. Uh, Luther. Um, what, one second. Luther. Um, for we had bone dice here. Uh, did you do you recall what was said about the mantle? Uh, yes. It it, it was um. Uh, part of it said the mantle is where they uh, sneak the boon. That's probably what's causing the mist. It's the sword. The boon is a good thing. But it's it's energy. It's what's causing the mist. But maybe it's what we can use to stop it. The possibility to defeat the monsters, but then we might have to also destroy the sword. We don't have time for this right now. A nightmare is stealing a child. Well, Well, yes, that's that's definitely what we have to do first. It said something about four four strangers. I didn't even write this down. Like, how am I the one coming up with it? (laughs) Four four strangers, the boon. Like, I think that's talking. She's prophesizing about us. Like, we got some cool water prophecy from the pretty demon troll from the well about, (laughs) about this sword. And now we have to go kill this thing with the, the boon sword. That's what I'm calling it now, the boon sword. Boon sword it is. That's in the game now. I'm going to write that down. Boon sword. I, I don't write things down. That's your guys' job. How am I the one doing this? I don't write things down. When you swing the boon sword, it goes boom. That's fine. <laughs> boon swords, ready? <laughs> All right. First, save the child. Save the world. Retrieve the sword. Third, save the world. That's doable. Maybe we should put the sword to save the child. Yeah, there you go. You got there. Hey, I'm proud of you. We got there. Hey, hey, hey. I'm the brains of this operation. You... Yeah, sure. You speaky bastard. As cool. you guys are talking, uh, come on, you guys, come on. As you get, as you guys are talking, Lassar, you're trying to gather up your bones. They start spinning before you even can touch them, <laughs> and then you're pulled in once more, almost un- not by your will. Um, it happens in, a, in the blink of an eye, but you see more. Um, you see the scene you were seeing before, but from a different perspective now. You're a couple meters away. Um, you, your form is taller than before. You're staring at this large swirling mass that the click clacker is fall and this girl falling behind him. But you do you hear a <sighs> and you see the smoke start to spillow out from presumably the mouth of whatever you're seeing through. Um, and it slowly starts to glide over the snow before you're you hear a finally and you're pulled back. Very quickly the bones <laughs> clack to the ground as you pile them into your bag really quick. Anything? It looks like it was behind them, though, not really in front of them. Something else out there. It's something else. It said, finally, I, yeah, I have a very bad feeling about all of this. But we should probably, we should, only we should here. Like a normal bad feeling or like a bad feeling? Like a worse than normal bad feeling. This is we need to stop this before it gets any worse. And I think at that point, we cut to you guys leaving this house. Um, time to decide. Are we going towards the, uh, towards the north of this farm? Or are we going to go try and find that sword? Uh, finding the sword. And on our way, it'd be like a scene of me telling Luther to send a letter back to the capital. So he like drops it off at the... You <laughs> <laughs> to take a letter. We need reinforcements, maybe. If we die, they need to know what happened. Great. Um, so you guys are leaving the door. <laughs> it's kicked open. Um, probably by Silas, you you kick the door open. We see all of you running out, and the um, the motherly figure is uh, in, in the main area with a small tray of cups, like, <laughs> oh, and the door slides behind her. You guys are running out. Where, um, I would have said, as we're running out, I would have said, where, your husband, where did he go? Uh, he he went he went north. Perfect. North. Um, so you guys you guys leave 
Unfortunately, we stop at the post office real quick. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Um, what, what are we doing? <laughs> why? Why did everyone call me the crazy one? Why did I get the crazy one? <laughs> we we watch as Luther's like looks at you for a second and then <laughs> you lick the paper really quick and <laughs> seal it. <laughs> We're told no one can leave. How is a letter going to leave? <laughs> Deposit it into the little box real quick. We have procedures. How I know, am I the one I know remembering Silas, this? That you do not follow procedures. I, I also like them. I don't either. But I, 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 like, I know it's fantasy world. And I know we're in sort of where monsters and man are at wit's end. But I like to imagine Luther sort of leans over and raises a little red flag <laughs> for this mail <laughs> before you guys leave. <laughs> so you guys are running towards this farm now. Um, on your right, as you're running past, down this road, um, let me change the music real quick. Get us a little bit more amped up. As we're, I think we're going to go into a fight, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, no. Um, as you guys are running. Prepared. You, you're you passing by this very quick, dried, crystallized corn on your right. Um, to your left is just a blank, open field. And as you're nearing, you see the, can- the flickering lights of these torches um, of this small mob that is heading north, spreading throughout this cornfield and, and this uh, blank field, non-corn field. Um, searching for this child, you hear several people yelling, um, yelling out the child's name. Um, and even further, Silas, with your eyes, you're able to see this clip clacker um, getting close to the edge of the Bramblebriar Wood. Um, probably about uh, half a mile away, maybe, um, in terms of distance of where you are. What would you guys like to do? I would pr- try and get the attention. Stop, stop. Do not go in there after it. You will die. You will all die. Oh. As, uh, I, I would listen up, to her. If you walk up to one of them, it's like, what? Follow what? Follow what where? Uh, I don't want to die. Leave this to the professionals. Professionals? Uh, 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 all right. Uh, Sir. Do you know where we could find them? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm looking Ow. at them. Ow. <laughs> you, guys, you didn't say you're a mist guard. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're looking at them. Uh, do I see this, the girl's father? Uh, yeah, he's a little bit a little bit further towards the Bramble Briar. Um, you can see him shouting, but as you guys are nearing the Bramble Briar, this blizzard is getting denser, and it's getting very hard to see everything. Um, so I guess I'm going to add this scene, this aspect really quickly. Um, dense snowfall. I'll be able to invoke that whenever I want later. Would my um, you can invoke sense, it as well. Would my danger sense negate that? Uh, yes. So pretty much uh, the only people that have to worry about it is Sir Edward, Lissara, and Luther. Um, but you guys are running. All of you can see the click clacker, just barely. Um, and before that, a couple couple yards before that, you can see the, the girl's child. Um, the glint of their sword being very prominent. Okay, are we able to catch up with the father? Uh, yeah, he's not really running. He's more of just doing a quick jog, looking back and forth. Doesn't look like anyone has, is particularly keen on seeing the click clacker um they might not have they might not even know what they're looking for they're just sort of calling out they can't really see the snow um, sir 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 um you call out he <gasps> swings his sword whoa, wide whoa whoa, whoa. Um, he torch in hand casting shadows over his scarred face he, huh, you you found it you found the monster have you yes lend us your sword and we are your best chance of saving your daughter Otherwise, if you go in there with us or without us, your life will also be forfeit. Make a rapport check for me, please. As he he looks down at his sword and says, "My dad's sword. You want my my family sword? Lend." I don't- um, go ahead. He's pretty attached to it. Um, he also doesn't want to die. Is the thing. So, be an average negotiator. Just get a one. <laughs> He's he's looking for that push God. for him not to go after, but this is his third favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's already lost two. Oh, oh great! <laughs> so we got a one. <laughs> Would you like to use a fate point or not? Because now that you have a one, you've tied. You could succeed at a minor cost. Yeah, yeah, I'll use a fate point. 
Okay. What would you like to... So, you have to, so to enter, use fate points, those at home. You have to tie it to a specific aspect of your character and to use that as like a drawing up of this uh, sort of boost within you. Um, I will say just because I'm trying to convince him and being the seriousness, I'll use my words as sharp as arrows aspect. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that makes sense. You're sort of being very poignant yeah, yeah. with your uh, words. Point, pointed and yeah, I'm getting to, getting to the point. Okay, go ahead and mark off a fate point. I'll accept that. Um, bumping up to a two, bumping up to a three, enough to succeed. So he, uh, all right, fine. Just bring bring my girl home safe, please. So he holds out this silver sword towards you. Um, at the base of it is this very ornate crest. Um, it looks like it's it's a large eagle with its wings spread out. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty unremarkable sword. Um, it's not super shiny. It's not super well made. It is. It's just a decent sword that someone that someone made as like a hobby, even. Uh, but you now have it, um, and North Silas, you're the only one that can see this. Click clacker has started to enter into the wood, and from the wood, you see its large skeletal hand sort of beckoning this child forth. I will um, give the sword to Sir Edward. Mm-hmm. And I, I kinda, say, kind of fumble say, with the sword. <laughs> I say, stay, stay close to me. I can see it through here, and I will take off the eye patch, revealing the uh, rock-colored eye under there. Uh, and I'll say, stay close. I uh, and we'll we'll track it down. So, when you take off the eye patch? In the most anime moment we can muster in this game, <laughs> we zoom in and there's a <laughs> glint as this um, large bird creature's eye is where yours once is, allowing you to see through this. Yeah, allowing you to see through this um, through this downfall of snow. So, Silas, you're leading the way for Sir Edward, Luther, and Lasara, um, heading towards the click clacker. We know where it is. Uh, I kind of want you guys to get to it. Um, so I say you get there just as this young girl was getting close to the tree line. Stop. Um, she, uh, uh, I wanted my mommy. She, she looks over to this click clacker who, who all of you can hear it speak. It says a come child. It's, it's hands beckoning, scuttle hands beckoning it towards it. He is not your mommy. Can I run up to grab hold of the, like the, the girl's arm can, or something, or is that too far? Yeah, yeah. I say you managed to get there pretty, pretty quickly. You managed to grab hold of her arm. It's not a friend. Whatever you think it is, that is a monster. <laughs> but, 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 mom, as, as she she as she reaches out towards it, um, you guys are a couple feet away. Um, I'm sorry, as you're touching her, you, you look over at it, and you kind of, I like to think with your mist, you're able to kind of see what she sees, maybe. Um, and it does look like it is her mother. Um, this thing is able to sort of alter its perception in some ways, and you know that. Um, but to her, she believes she's following her mother into the, into these woods. It's a lie. It's a trick. That's what they do. They show you things. They show you things that aren't there. It's not true. It's not true. That's not your mother. But, but... Your real mother's back there, miss. <laughs> and on <thank> you... <laughs> Uh, Lasara, you're the only one that'll be able to hear a come, child, quickly, quickly, it's safe in here. All the rest of you hear a <laughs> as it starts to come out of the woods now. You see it's, uh, the full breadth of it. It stands as tall as a black bear on its hind legs. It's very large. Um, as it, co- as it comes over towards you. At this point, we're gonna, it's gonna be aggressive. Um, fate combat's very fluid. Um, because it's making the first move, it's gonna go first, and then I'll decide who goes next and then they decide who goes next of that order. Um, and whoever goes last is able to choose who starts the round. So let's say Luther ends. Luther can say, I want to start the next round, sort of thing. They're able to double up on that. So you have to kind of choose who you want to go next and such. Um, it's very fluid narrative-based combat. Um, but this click, this click clack comes out, and um, I'm going to say it, it's going to use its only stunt that it has. It's going to use face your fear as it comes out and looks to Lysera, and, and let's lose a 
and from its wide maw that opens up, its bone teeth jutting forth, this um, sort of liquid plasma-like smoke sort of <laughs> clops on down onto the ground. And so, Lasara, you're going to need to make a will check against it as it uses provoke. Um, it's just sort of, you know, one of the things it's really great at is making your fear come to life. All right. And this one, I will roll and roll 20 just so we're, we can all see what it is because we all know what, what this thing is. Let me go over to Click Clacker real quick. Boom. Beat an eight. Oh, goodness. <laughs> will, strength of man. <laughs> Great. So an eight versus a negative one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we have a succeed with style for the Click Clacker. However, Lissara, you're able to use some fate points to kind of bump you up if you want, or re-roll even, up to you. Um, I am going to do that. I'm going to try and in, try and invoke the the aspect of what happened to Marsdale and what happened to the, the child there still haunts me. I want to do what I can to stop that happening again. Okay, sure. And I am going to... Bump it up by two because I don't trust my luck. Okay. And so. in return, can I use a fate point to lower its roll by two? Of course, yeah. What's your reasoning? Uh, born in the shadows, I, 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 I understand this creature. And uh, Lasara, don't listen to it. Don't do it. I love that, actually. So yeah. So I'm gonna keep a marker really quickly. Um, so negative one plus two, that brings it up to a one, plus the other two. Uh, from those, make sure you mark your fate points. I'll bring it up to a three. So now we're at a five, we're at a five difference. Um, still bad, each of you can but... still use fate points if you like. They just can't be tied to those aspects anymore. Um, however, Luther, Silas, you two can help as well. Or we just end it here, and maybe Lasara dies here. Who knows? No, I would never abandon Lasara. So I will jump in front of her and take a shot if possible. Okay, sure. Um, since I tied your fate point, go ahead and pay a fate point for me. As Silas jumps in front and lets loose an arrow that sort of <laughs> pierces right through this shadow, sort of breaking it up a little bit. Um, that'll bring it up to a five. We're at a three difference. It's still within 60 with style, so it's if you guys want to let this happen or not, it's still up to you. You just need two more points. This is riveting. <laughs> um, Luthor, do something! Stop her! <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna uh, run a fifth point, and because I always follow in Sir Edward's footsteps, I'm gonna also yell at her to <laughs> come. <laughs> Luther, do something. Uh, yeah, yeah, what Sir Edward said. <laughs> I like that. Go ahead and pay your fate point. That'll bring it up to a seven. I still succeed, but it's not with styles. It's not, it's not going to hurt as much. You can choose right now if you want to take that or pay more fate points. It's up to you. I'll take that. Okay. So what would normally happen uh, happens. It does your worst fear manifests out of this globule of shadow sort of rises up. Lysara, what is it you fear most? Oh, what does Lysara fear worst? Lysara, I guess, fears worst the fact that everything she sees in the shadows and the darkness of nightmares is actually real and are actually coming for her and everyone she knows and everyone in the world is going to be swallowed up by shadows and darkness. Okay. Interesting you say everyone you know. Um... Oh, sorry, who are you mo more close to? Your mother or your father? Uh, her mother. Okay. So, Lasara, you watch as Mummy Dearest rises up from the shadow, her skin dark, her eyes uh, piercing red, as she rises up with a uh, her wide grin, almost unnatural, um, corpse-like, one might say, even. She looks over at you. Um, because that he gets one free invoke um, against you. Uh, and that is that aspect is forever in play. Anyone can play with that aspect. 
Um, but with that, I think it's gonna it's gonna choose and it wants to see what Lacero is gonna do. So Lacero, what do you, what do you do in response to seeing your mother, however she might look, rides up from the shadows and sort of, hello, Didi, dearie daughter. And her hands coming out towards you. So Lacero, Lacero is gonna let go of the child that she was holding and sort of, it's okay. Start, so it takes. He stays, starts slowly walking towards it. Going, no. You really here? Of course, I never left. Her hands sort of splaying outwards towards you. <sighs> Sora, no, don't do it. Don't, don't fall for it. This is inadvisable. <laughs> No. Uh, Sorry, your your mother died it? five years ago. I turn to her and I say, and put her hand on my chest and say, "It's me. I'm real. You know what I tell you is real." Silas, you look you look over at this visage and you see her head. I'm gonna mimic it because I don't know how to describe it. You see her go. <laughs> Her vision is wide. You hear <laughs> as it lashes out at you. It's gonna try and fight you um, <laughs> with, its, with its large claws, would slash across you. Um, so you can choose how you want to defend against that. You can either take it with physique, you can dodge out of the way with athletics, um, or some other way if you're creative enough. Mm. Uh, but I will go ahead and roll for this bad boy. I'm using a real dice. Okay, it's uh, against. It's a, it's against its roll, but I'll tell you what it got. So Lysara's going to just like, raise up her hands and try and block and somehow like like block and like try and push back against it in any way kind of fight or scrabble her way away from it if she can. Okay. And I would try and like use provoke to defend. I say, look over there, you, you godforsaken earthworm. <laughs> okay. Um, so go ahead and roll. Try to get better than a negative one. Okay, is that athletics or fight? Or? Um, I'm sorry, it'd be athletics. For Silas, it'd be defend against provoke. Um, as it's rake, it's trying to rake against both of you. Oh! <laughs> How? How? I gave you a negative one to beat. <sighs> a negative three? Uh, so... <laughs> Sir Edward Cross. Actually, you know what? Um, I think it's time. I, th I think it's time that curse to come into play, Lissara. Um, I'm going to pay a fate point that this click clicker has available, one of it, to activate your curse, to bump you down even more, two more. Um, just sort of to have that succeed with style to where it's really going to hurt what it's going to do to you. Um, so you can either accept that and get that fate point at the end of the combat, or pay another one to sort of say, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, I can't. I'm already in deep enough shit. I'm, I'm taking the fate point. <laughs> <laughs> no, not now. This is not time. All right, you feel this, you feel this fire within start to bubble up and lock you in place, but you shake it off as you dodge out of the way, almost getting the full brunt of this slash against you. Um, and it does deal, uh, it deals, it's negative one, two, so two difference. So go ahead and mark off your two stress box of physical. Okay, yes. Um, as you take uh, just a small gash across your chest, not not true not true damage, but you do roll out of the way. Um, <laughs> Stylus, as it goes to strike at you, it does yeah. look over and it blocks eyes with Luther, I think. You, didn't, you were just kind of pointing in some direction. Luther, it looks right into your eyes and and misses Silas just barely. Um, with that, it was kind of Silas and Lucero's turn. So I say, um, I think it makes sense for Luther to go next, honestly. And so Luther, what do you do? As this girl was like, uh, mommy? And she's kind of uh, the only person next to her. Sidles up next to Sir oh. Edward, I think. Mm -hmm. okay. Actually, yeah. sidles up next to Luther. I like I like that way more. Your, your initial reaction, let's go with that. Okay. Um I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to grab hold of uh of her hand and and just try to run away with her and and, and I'm I'm going to say 
uh, I, 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 let's take you to your, your real mother back, back over there. Uh, mom, mommy. Okay, please. <laughs> As you start to kind of turn, turn her away, you look back at this click clacker in the woods, still sort of its hands dancing in the darkness or sort of puppeteering this uh, shadow of Sarah's mother. Um, you see its eyes lock with you and you hear a, no. Is yes. <laughs> Um, so I'll say you're, uh, go ahead and make a athletic, or make a will roll, I guess, to sort of resist it um, pulling you towards the Bramble Briar. Um, it's base, it's base, God, y'all are rolling real shitty, huh? Um, it's base skill that it has, I'll be using. Um, beat a three, my man. Bruh. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I'll spend a fate point for him. Uh, okay. Never never lead Luther astray. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Run. Go. Get out of here. Okay. Lassie. I- <laughs> <laughs> Go. I hate you. Leave. I don't want you anymore. <laughs> I think in this instance, um, you invoke that. And I'll say you also sort of invoke dense snowfall. Um, on this scene as well, it's hard for him to see this creature, um, but you do you do stand in front of the way. Unfortunately, as you yell, it does lock eyes with you, and you are now its next target. As Luther is able to get this girl away, head, heading back towards Cotton Garden, um, the mob of people still around the area um, shouting and um, trying to beckoning her towards them. Uh, with that, Sir Edward, what do you want to do? I'm gonna cut a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, kind of dipping into the shadows a little bit. I'm mm-hmm. going to jut up and try to stab him. Yeah. Okay. So Force you guys watch as Sir Edward just, um, I like to imagine it's very fluid, but also a little drunken master style as you <laughs> dive into some shadows, disappearing much like the cl- click clacker itself and coming out from one of the tree shadows of the Bramble Briar, coming up and going to slash at it with this boon sword that we have now boon sword um go ahead and roll a fight for me it's going to try and avoid um with one of its skills you can be reversing its roll um fortunately for you it's not really a great fighter oh goodness so would you beat a negative two i did with a zero. Oh, nice <laughs> <laughs> Don't so, know. But, uh, ooh, but uh, could I spend a fate point to get a succeed with style? If if you want, what fate point would you be using, or what uh, aspect would you be using? Reborn into the shadows. Okay, as you're sort of you're able to come out and know exactly where to strike, and you know shadow creatures sort of weak points. I think you come out and so I would cross. Click clackers aren't very physical; they're more mental creatures. How do you disperse of this monster? Oh, you have to... It's its teeth are what hold it to the this plane. You have to, uh, you have to disperse of them. Ah. You have to knock its teeth out. So, it, of course, how could I not know? It was its main danger. Its main trouble aspect is... <laughs> what'd you just say? It was indentured to this plane. Oh! See, okay. <laughs> I had an idea... Of tying it to that, but that's a way better. Its trouble aspect is that it's indentured to this plane, and you knew that somehow. As you come out and slice through with the sword, its teeth splitting in two, almost by the by the jaw points itself, um, by the hinges, um, letting it fall out, and you hear as it disperses in a big puff of smoke that starts that sort of envelops you and wreaths around you, um, almost like it's trying to um, suck air out of you, almost. Um, before the teeth poof, plop into the snow, its hands poof, poof, into the snow once more. Um, the only corporeal parts of his body staying, the rest of it dispersing into the snow to add to the snowfall. Um, as its wreaths around Sir Edward Cross, I think you also have a vision of what it sees. Um, hinting back at this prophecy that you've had, each one you kill, will you learn more about this monster. 
And at this point, you realize this isn't the monster that is plaguing. That's not the source of the curse. Um, you're sort of seeing in its vis in its vision um, a flashback of sorts. You see it standing in the bramble briar, in a very small clearing, a large tree in the center, vines creeping around this tree, um, branches coming out from the base of it. And at this point, you realize it's not there aren't there aren't branches. They're antlers. As this very thin figure is at the base of this tree, the roots coming over its form, not, not obscuring most of it. You see its hand resting on one of the on one of the roots, another one on the other one, another hand on the other branch, um, and you hear a "Obey your king." As you hear a, it, the click clack retreats into the into the brush, and from that you learn a little bit about this source of the curse. You know that one, the source is something, um, an unholy primeval of sorts. Um, and you know, it's main, one of its main aspects. Um, it is one of the main aspects is all, all obey me or suffer eternal torment. It seems whatever this click hacker was dealing with, it either had to obey its commands or, or suffer fate worse than death, perhaps. And within that quick second, we're back in that field. Um, the sort of chaos of that fight retreating, uh, receding away from the adrenaline pumping, slowing down. Um, Luther, as you're heading, you're leading this girl back to her father. She's running across the snow with a <laughs> Silas, Lissara, Sir Edward. You three are around the remains of this click clacker. What'd you guys like to do? I would tend to Lissara. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. And you know what I mean. All things it's considered, good. you're not dead. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. But I stood in front of a. a shadow monster for you much good it did oh thank you can I... <sighs> look thank you I'm... I'm gonna disperse the the remains <laughs> spread them apart just, okay just touch really them. Kicking, kicking at them not really much effort yeah. not really okay cool aren't you glad I gave you that sword it came in came in useful Useful. It probably would have been better in your hands, but I just, I, I, uh, I'm still I'm fumbling much, with it a little bit. Much, much less so than the precise action I just took. <laughs> I'm, I'm much more with the, the bow and arrows. Uh, sword's not really, really my thing. So it, it seems that I had a vision. It, I was wrong. I, I know it's not common that I'm wrong, but. Luther, can you write the, that down? It's not the source of the curse. <laughs> is, is Luther, yeah, as, as, you, as you sort of say for Luther, you see Luther, at this point, you've brought this young girl with her with her father. So he brings her into this very large bear hug. He looks up to you, tears streaming down his face. He's, thank you. Thank you. Come, Sally, hurry. He picks her up um, and turns with the crowd. And for one, one final last look at you, he says, I'll never forget this. He turns and leaves back towards Cotton Garden. You're welcome, Ram sir. Ram uh, <laughs> do you happen to have any uh, yeah. money? <laughs> we're, uh, we're, we're running a, a bit low. Uh, I don't have much coin on me, but it's not really use here anymore. Um, he sort of digs into his pockets and tries to find some coinage. I guess I'll roll resources really quickly to see if he has any change on him did you ask for just that drops like a hundred gold because it's nothing to him <laughs> yes negative coin holy shit so that's three plus it's that's a plus one uh, or that's plus three so with a zero um he pulls out a pretty sizable coin purse i guess and throws it at you as you catch it um you're a learned man you kind of feel it for a second feels like probably 25 gold, which is, isn't a whole lot, but it's a lot for common folk to have on them. You get the feeling him being blacks with family, maybe he had some on him. Thank you very much, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. He turns and leaves you. As you see your friends um, standing among the remains of this click-clacker, you walk up to them. Uh, just as Lucera's, write that down. Oh, write right what down? Uh Edward here says he's wrong, and that we need that recorded for posterity. <laughs> good, good joke, good joke. 
But seriously, Edward, what did you see? That uh, it's this living, living tree of some sort—a tree with a face. Okay. Just, I, I, uh, Luther, do you know anything about trees with faces? Luther, go ahead and make a lore no- roll for me, please. Um, to know about this, honestly, you've got to be a pretty, pretty fantastic scholar. Get a six. Hmm. Faces with trees. I, I. No trees with faces. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a separate thing. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 nothing about uh, trees with faces, no. Damn, I didn't think so. How about ficuses with facades? <laughs> oh, did we lose? Did we we lose? lost his. Oh, dear. She'll, she'll be back. She always ah. comes back. Oh, I'll just. But you can go, go on and continue. She'll, she'll pop in. Um, hmm. Well, I say we go in, you know? Why not? Where, where, where was this tree? It. I, I didn't get, get a good look of where it was at. Like, I just uh, gesture to the forest. In here, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, I, did, should we go after the tree first, or the 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 the, 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 the swan? Swan, yes, swan. To, to be fair, whatever is in there will find us. I'm sure. So, whatever which one decides to find us first is the one we'll go after. The one that finds us first. <laughs> not, not right. Bad logic, actually. And I'm saying, it's, we're, we're really at a point where we're stuck here. We're going to go into these woods. We know we're going into the woods. So, like, like, hey, if we come across a tree, we'll kill it with fire. If we come across uh, the swan lion, we'll asphyxiate it with its own tail. <laughs> Just I, like I that. Think- I think as you say that, we got we have to cut. I think the only possible scene next is you guys walking through the Bramble Briar. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess nearing this uh, tree line, um, you all of you had have had felt this of the Bramble Briar wood. Um, there's a constant coldness you've grown accustomed to that, that sort of vanishes as you enter in. Um, although in its place is nothing. Uh, for the first time in your life, you feel a hole within the very essence of your soul opening gape from within you. Um, from your chest, you feel a tug almost, um, as if you're attached to a rope, um, coiled around you, pulling you deep into the wood, but you resist with a little mental effort, pulling you um, forcefully, um, but it's constant. The wind that whistles to escape between the morning trees is not, it's not one of nature. It's the last dying breath of a once lush forest. The leaves, as you, uh, as you walk over, you crunch beneath you. They sit in time. Uh, they lay untouched from the decay. Um, but have kept as a, almost as a grim reminder of what once was for this now snow-fallen town. And though as you it, walk further in, what's up? I was going to say, though it's not an aspect of his, Silas actually means of the wood. So Silas is feeling kind of depressed right now. Seeing yeah. This. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that t- make, makes total sense. Anyone that's of, uh, even remotely of nature would feel almost hurt um, at what at what has happened. Can can I make a will save against uh, the the pull against it? Yeah, of course. I, I want to be following more than being pulled. Sure. Go ahead and make a go ahead and roll will for me to resist this thing. Um, let me pull up the stats for it really quickly so I know what you're rolling against. Um, so go ahead and beat a three. Uh, meats meats okay so at that you succeed at a minor cost so i think at this point as you metaphorically cut the rope uh that you're being held with you hear a all of you i think you hear a <laughs> <laughs> come little mist weavers come kneel before your king sort of echoes out um and at that point a chill runs up your spine uh, you we're, we're actually the mist guard <laughs> Correction. <laughs> Correction to burn. We are mist guard. Um, as you walk, you feel spot. You feel a chill run up your spine as you feel eyes immediately watching you. 
um, something within the forest is waiting or has been waiting for you. And while you gather your things and sort of uh, go towards this next hunt, and on what you thought was an everyday hunt, your mouth goes dry and your eyes start to struggle to find that sort of liquid to keep them wet. You guys walk forward for about 30 minutes or so. Does anything you guys would like to talk about? Now's the time. Well, as as a, instead of being pulled, since I'm following, yeah, now, uh, you're, now you're following. You're not being pulled. I would like to uh, shadow jaunt uh, into the shadow. Since nobody's seeing me, they're in front of me. Uh, I'm going to slip into the shadows okay. and follow incomporally. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you guys watch as Silas sort of recedes into the shadows of a tree. Um, you still feel their presence, but nope, nobody watches me. Oh uh, well, I, he disappears, and yeah, you've done this before. So I, I can't assume... do it under pressure. I can't do it. <laughs> guys, don't look. Guys, don't look at me. <laughs> Edward, look, eyes forward, Edward. I mean, Luther. <laughs> there. Yes, yes, sir. Um, Sorry, you're showing yeah, so me. much. You're showing so much more advanced uh, wisdom than your master here. I get you confused sometimes. <laughs> Oh no, it, he he's this is all uh very much beneath him. I'm I uh is, this is a task suited well suited for me. Um do, well, do you have great. any water? Do you, do you have any water by the way? My my mouth seems a bit uh dry. Unfortunately, I'm in the same boat here and I really wouldn't recommend eating the snow. It might kill you. Mm, in, indeed. So, we'll just have to manage. Great. I think at that point, um, we sort of the camera pulls out and we see the sort of sideways sideways view of you guys walking, making this trek through the forest. Um, Asara is with you, just to clarify. She's not with us at the moment. A characteristic and common for her, she's probably in her own head having a nightmare. Um, as you guys walk, fault. We, <laughs> we, we see the sideways view, and we as people watching this sort of movie that I like to frame fate as see these creatures crawling around you there. All you see is this um, sort of yellow golden glow to their small spider like bodies um, weaving around you, even in the trees. Um, and as we follow it, they get denser and denser as you head deeper into the forest. Silas, you feel something, but you're not sure what direction. Your danger sense is telling you in every direction. This whole It might be the whole forest is out to get you at this point. But you're unsure if that's because of what has been taunting you, or if the, the trees are dead, or something actually coming to come get you. You're unsure. Um, but it's at the point, as you guys are walking, Silas, it, your danger sense goes off immediately. As he's small, um, I'm bad with size. Uh, Chihuahua size. We all know what Chihuahua is like. Chihuahua sized creatures come out. And um, they are black in form. They're, they're fuzzy. They're not like made of shadows or anything. The black in form had these yellow pustules on their bodies. Um, they have about six claw figures, I guess. They look crab-like. Um, and immediately all of you know what they are. They are these are weblings um, submitted by the very grateful Crackery. Um, these creatures, um, kind of sort of come out in a swarm from these trees. These, uh, at this point, you see there are several th several threads linking each tree. They've made some webs uh, that you've walked into the nest of. Um, they don't make any noise, um, like talk or anything. You just hear it as they're crawling towards you. Um, these large chihuahuas. Um, what would you like to do? First one, whoever would like to act against these weblings. Um, do I see, do, do we look trapped in here? Uh, yeah, it's hard to find a way out at this would, point without having to go through some web. Would Silas, not, not that I'm looking for anything like extensive, but have any sort of like trick arrows where I could like, not like a big explosion, but like try and get multiple, multiple of these, since they're small creatures, like try and use one arrow to get uh, a few different creatures. Hmm. I like that idea a lot. And... I do have average craft as well, so it might have been something I, I was messing with before as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I was looking for a way to sort of... I don't think there are trick arrows that don't exist. It's more of you need you need to control the mist 
So I think go ahead and roll craft, and we'll treat that as you previously morphing the mist to sort of fit your needs. Um, to do that, you just have to be decent at at being a mist weaver, like they mentioned before. Um, get a two. Yeah, I rolled a zero. You rolled a zero? Oh, bud. Um, so I, you can su- su- succeed at a major cost and craft one on the fly or just fail. Up to you. Yeah, I'd probably just fail. Like, Okay. Point. Can I can um, I burn a fate um, to uh, assist in the, the crafting? Yeah, how would you like to do that? Uh, um, I'd also like to point out each of you got um, because I spent fate points during that last combat. Each of you got a fate point. Lacera got two back. Oh, great! That helps. Good because I was out. <laughs> I was I was at one. I had one left. So how are you helping? Uh, yeah, how, how would you like to help? How would I like to help? Um, how would he like to help? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm going to ask uh, Silas, uh, what, what, what are you trying to make? Can I, can I assist you? Uh, something that goes boom. I, 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 multiple casualties, one arrow. You hear from the shadows. That, that, new, that new thing that we were talking about. <laughs> Page 67. I love that you have a book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, quickly. Quickly now. All right. All right. Like, These creatures are getting closer and closer, um, forming this large mass of glowing golden pustules. It had, a, it had like explosive bits on it. Come on. Shrapnel. Oh, Fragmentation. The- the the, sh- the shrapnel arrowhead. Come on. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we yes, go. And that, I pull out. Course. I pull out uh, this like these like little black balls, and okay. uh, and uh, I I give them to Silas and I go uh, stick try try these stick them on the the ends of your arrows. Okay. Okay. Uh, what the hell are these things? I kind of bolo it around and I say, uh, fetch Cash it with snow. <laughs> I, okay. I say, the, fetch the like, I say, like, here, fetch, and I loose it at a big group of those things. Okay, Luther, go ahead and pay your fate point. Um, go ahead and roll shoot, Silas, against them. I'll be rolling against, I'll be rolling their way to sort of dodge out of the way. Um, these things are pretty crafty, so. Um, unfortunately, my dice aren't favoring me. It's, um... Okay, you just got to beat a one. I rolled a five. You got a five. Holy shit. So you succeed with style. Um, and honestly, I think the, on- the only way that you can succeed with style is you take out a large portion of them and deal sort of extra... Um, Way more powerful than you anticipated. Whatever Luther gave you, you were not expecting it to be this. The trees kind of bow. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the trees bow. You let loose this arrow with a... And it sticks into the snow for a second. And for you, you turn, like, what? For this loud explosion happens. I trees sort of... My eyebrows. Groan as they bend back from this explosion. Several of the spiderlings sort of fly off, burning up into this fire. Um... Sir Edward, you're the only one that's that was sort of looking in the area, so you will be able to see. As each one dies, you watch as mist leaves their body into the into the air, as usual, as most monsters do leave back some mist. But you do see a spectral form leave them, sort of pale, translucent uh, in appearance, with a <gasps> up into the air. And each one that you that you catch a glimpse of is feminine in some way. Um, as mm. you dealt with all of these spiderlings in one blow, they don't have a whole lot of physical stress, so you just <laughs> decimated them. Um, well done, Luther. This now, now this wind sort of <laughs> coming out of you. Each of you sort of very warm. If any of you still have the consequence that we had at the beginning of the game, mark that off immediately, um, as this heat has sort of. Uh, erupted around you. Um, I think at this point, Whoa. only Edward might. 
Yeah, I, I still had the cool chill to the bone. All right, um, and because Silas is the one who did it, you watch as the, their their mist sort of swirls around you. Tis is back. Yay! Um, you watch as a sort of mist swirls around you, and um, welcome back, Lacera. Uh, great to have oh. you. Good. Um, we just we just had a quick little combat. It's no sweat. Um, you're quick. also you're also muted. Um, you watch as this mist swirls around Silas, and Silas, you have a vision as well. As you're pulled into this forest, you hear <laughs> you're pulled into that same sort of clearing, large tree. This creature um, sat on this wooden throne of sorts, both hand both hands on this on on these roots. Um, you you hear it speak to these this mass of spiderlings. You hear a leave no witnesses for my souls. As these spiderlings sort of or these weblings <laughs> crawl away in this large mass, these small little chihuahua beings. They're not ter- they're not terrible creatures. Um, you get the feeling that it too caused them to to hunt. And at this, you you learn two aspects because you see with style. The weblings, one of their aspects, was forced to suck the souls of mothers out. Um, so you success, you found one of the creatures. You found the creatures that were hunting the mothers. Mother hunters. Animals. Yes. Um, and then from this creature, um, as, as you watch, you see its antlers sort of are grasping out almost, their shadows reaching through these spiderlings and snaking around them. Um, you learned one of its aspects, the antlers of a demon cast shadows of sin. Um, there's a sort of way to sort of interact with the world. Um, and in the blink of an eye, you're back in this, the remnants of this ashy forest. Uh, Lasara, to give a quick rundown, um, just sort of catch up to speed because I'm not a terrible human being. What just happened? Um, I just seem to have, like, Silas, Marjorie, it happened again. You know, you know that thing that happened where I forgot everything that happened in like the last thing. <laughs> what happened? Why are the spiders here? Last thing, last thing I, I remember the other creature was dead, but where are we? Thanks to the genius of our friend Luther here, uh, we were I was able to explode a lot of those uh, pustule creatures. So, okay, fine. Uh, you asked. Luther, you okay? Oh yes, I'm fine. Uh, I would, just... would you like to uh, look at my notes? The <laughs> I think you look at Luther and half their body is like covered in the ash as they were turned sideways. The other half is just perfectly like normal and clean. Their hair maybe if they have if they have any length of hair kind of exploded. <laughs> What's that burnt hair smell? <laughs> it, I didn't do anything bad, did I? No, no, you were you were fine. From the shadows. Not this time. We, you killed the monster? You got the a monster? lot of help there, Luther. I mean, Edward. See, I did it again, but like in reverse. Like, I think You're Edward welcome. is so young and <laughs> incompetent that like I, I get a mix for Luther, you know? Sorry, I did it in reverse this time. Master, <laughs> Master Cross was obviously uh, testing us, you know. He he could have easily dealt with um, all this, of course. Uh, thank you, oh, my God. Thank you, thank you Luthor. Uh, yeah. this one as well. We you really have probably be on our way. Stop gloating. The rest of us have killed monsters, you know, Luthor. It's... <laughs> it's all right, uh, we still have a goose lion to find and a tree face. A tree face? Tree face. A tree with a face, you know. Yeah. A tree oh, face. Yes. Right. Well. <laughs> any, so, any, uh, um, any clues on the goose lion? No, I figure we'd hear it. We. Uh, it sounds like it's a loud creature. Like maybe an eel. I can't. I can't make a goose sound. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, probably like a goose <laughs> or a lion's. Or like that'd be kind of freaky seeing <laughs> a goose face like roar like a lion. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be strange just seeing a lion make goose noises. That would be great too. Ah. (laughs) We're going to skip to the next scene real quick (laughs) as we end that. Um, (laughs) The camera pans out once more. We get that sideways view. Um, Almost in in black and blue. Um, The trees as this silhouette on on our camera's vision. You guys traveling across the silhouettes on this blue uh, background. 
Um, I think the next logical step is to guys just to get to this clearing. I feel like we need to we need to get there. Um, so you guys uh, walk for what feels like thirty minutes, um, using Silas's eyes and Edward's sort of learned knowledge to not get lost and not tread over previous ground. Um, you manage to get to the cusp of a tree line of a clearing in this forest. Um, I'm not hearing. Here we go. Uh, cusp of a tree line of this forest. Face. And as you peer through, you see in the center is this large tree. Um, its leaves still on its branches. And within it, you see what looks to be a deer skull. Um, bright and luminescent in its, uh, in its gaze, the moon shining up above, casting a, uh, a glow right down on it, directly on it, even. That's it. That's the tree I saw. Um, it has large antlers coming off of, of its skull. Um, it's sitting, just staring straight ahead. Oh, and okay. as you take in, you take in the, the visage, and as Lissara utters okay. the words, you, you, ca- you see them. You see 12 mounds leading towards this sort of wooden throne, almost um, fl- making a path out of these bodies where snow has covered them. Um, there is no crimson on the on the snow, so you, you don't see any blood, but you do see 12 mounds with a spot for a 13th leading up to the uh, leading up to what can be presumed the antler king. They, you're not sure if they've noticed you, but you have a feeling that they know you're there. They, they don't say anything. What would you guys like to do? Okay. I'm keep, keeping my eye out for uh, Goose Lion. Um, and then just kind of waiting. I figure this thing is a tree king. It'll want to talk first and say what's what. Kind of like evil genius monologue. <laughs> So like pronounced tree kin. <laughs> the G is silent. Wow. Does anyone have kin? We could burn it. <laughs> Silas, do you, do you have your tinderbox? Burn it. Would I, I, I mean, I'm sure I've had like lighted arrows are a thing. Would I have mm-hmm. stuff to prepare that. Yeah, I'd Maybe. say so. That makes sense. Maybe that would make things worse. Or yeah. better. It rarely makes things better. You hear yeah. <laughs> Come. Don't keep your king waiting. You watch its hand. Um, I didn't vote for you. Raise up and beckon you toward. Should we um, talk you, to it? As it, as, it, as it beckons, the trees seem to bend, letting loose this easy path toward the clearing. Sarah is going to step forwards. Okay, I would um, I would join her like if she like I said depending at the pace like I would try and like either be side to side or like just kind of nudge my arm in front of her a little bit. King. Hmm. What? What do you want? Why are you here? To walk again. And killing these people, taking these people, taking people helps. A needed price for my regain of power. He sort of raises his hand once more and you watch as he tries to move, but the roots seem to keep him in place, almost like a prison slash throne that he sits on. Um, He beckons towards these, what you can assume to be the bodies of the children. Um, and you watch as several of them start to shift and move. Um, almost like as, as they might be alive or they might not be. But they do shift under the snow. And he says, Witch, your companions, step forth into my throne room. And he's, he takes his hand and brings it into a fist as the trees actually uproot and with large... <laughs> Grown and op- leave a very clear designated path, um, sort of adding where you were hiding to the clearing now. Uh, Sarah takes a couple more steps forward, sort of 
cautiously and sort of glancing over her shoulder back at Edward with the sword and Silas and just kind of, we found it. Now this is kind of your bit. But glancing where you thought Edward should be. <laughs> yeah, Edward is currently in the shadows. Ah, sorry, I'm a bit out of sorts. <laughs> That's okay. So I would, I mean, I'm going to be hoping that Edward is trying to sneak close to this to try and take it out. I will go into my. Did Edward die? No, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. I said so. Um, Mister Mister Tree King. Nice to meet you. Um, I have a question. If you get your legs back, I mean, what's next? You know, have you ever heard the phrase, you give a tree its legs, it's going to want a set of arms? Luthor, fact check that. <laughs> You're just going to be wanting more. <sighs> Like, uh, the, the Antler King sort of turns towards you. It, their head sort of lulling. On them, they wear looks just feel like rags, like a potato sack almost over their body, hiding most of their true form. You say, next I will take my spot rightfully where the gods reside. See, now that's super ambitious. Like, you've got to, like, have small incremental goals. You ever, like, you, one step after you got legs thing, God chair. Like, come on, man. Like, aim a little small, like, baby steps. <laughs> well, oh, shit. Sorry, steps. I, uh, um, Marjorie. Growth. Shh. Oh, here, here, here. As I'm hoping Edward's getting closer, I, I, I say, I've got a joke for you. And I say, knock, knock, as I knock two arrows. And I say, I forgot the punchline and shoot two arrows at the tree. Uh, as you do that, he's going to try and resist. He watches his hand raises and closes the fist. Um, go ahead and roll shoot. You're going to be rolling against his defense. Ooh, interesting. So it's a... Oh, very interesting. He got a three. Um, so as you you knock these two arrows and <laughs> let loose, they fly through the air, whizzing through this crisp breeze uh, of this winter wonderland. Um, I'm he has some fate points. I'm gonna use some fate points here and sort of d disperse them. Um, so he as he grasps his hand and moves it into a fist, he watches the brambles of these trees come together just take up space within him, sort of created this physical shield of wood. Um, and that's going to be his uh, his main aspect, uh, which I will reveal is the unholy primeval of nature. Um, so I'm going to bump one down. That bumps him up two more. Um, that gets him to a five. And no, he can't go down that easily. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna use another one. Um, this, this one will go directly to Silas, that last one, um, at the end of this combat, or whenever we decide. Um, the next one is, um, let me think. Um, I don't know if I have anything, though. He'll take it. Um, he'll well, just, he'll, can I, he's can hardwood. I, can I use any fate points to try and bump it yeah. back up? Yeah, so of course. I, I think my main aspect, uh, hawk-eyed marksman with a sharp tongue, fits perfectly. Okay. So I'll try and bump that up. Um, and I can I do? Would bumping it up any more do anything worth worthwhile? If I bump um, it up so yeah, if you if you got two if you got two more, um, you'll do, you'll get the succeed with style. So you'll both yeah, do yeah, more damage what? and get a boost. I, you know what? I'll do that. You know what? I'll use my, all my fate points and I'll. I'll use. I imagine the Antler King does not look great. He kind of, mm -mm. So I'll use my sucker for a pretty face to like want to shoot something that's super ugly. What? Okay. Okay. I, mean, I could use something else. I mean, I, I'm trying to be. I could say I will never well, abandon. I, I didn't like, like that. 
I'm here to I'm here to protect Lysara. I could say I also have words as sharp as arrows, like tying you know, it in. I think it's like for a pretty face shows more about Silas than I realize. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> ugly. I, I mean, it's not, an ugly not, monster. Not that I am judging it for being ugly. It's just it is like ugliness incarnate. <laughs> okay. Face, we weren't um, finding like pretty dryads or something. <laughs> So, yeah, oh, good thing. Uh, <laughs> I should have planned for that. So as you take out your arrows and let loose, uh, they fly through the air, whizzing past these bramble shields that he, that he's conjured up. Um, they sink right into his chest and do a certain amount of damage. Um, and I'll say you create the aspect on him, sort of like a boost. Um, this goes away at the end of, like, this encounter almost. Um, let see. We'll say he's... Oh, he's definitely rooted to the tree. As where he, he's, I think you've you've hit both of his arms, so he can't really use his hands to control. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyone can invoke that to get like a plus two. All right, and seeing seeing the opportunity here, <clears throat> Edward's going to leap from the shadows. Okay, and is going to strike at his throat. Okay, with the sword. Okay, go ahead and roll a fight for me. And that will be against his defense, which is should be high. It should be if I roll correctly. Awesome. So that's a six versus All your right. four. So from my shadow, John, I have one free invoke. Mm-hmm. So that's a plus two. Right. So now you're tied. So six. And then if I invoke the... The, the rooted to the tree mm-hmm. gives me a, another plus two. Okay. So with <clears> that, <throat> if you're using the rooted to the tree, that'll dissipate. So now he's at a... You're two ahead. He's two behind. If you kill him now, I'll cry. <laughs> so I need to find something to do. <laughs> James and invokes... I'm going to invoke GM where I say, fuck you. Um, <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! He's going to use his stunt, um, and his stunt, aptly named, is "You're an Untouchable." Um, you're, and it says his kingly visage causes all enemies to take a minus one to all physical fight rolls against him if he pays a fifth point. Um, so he's going to. Someone should give me a uh, a boost here. So he's going to pay a fate point. Um, so that's still <laughs> one difference. So it's not too high. However, he's going to use another one. Um. To I lost a sheet. Um, to all obey me or suffer eternal torment, he's gonna pay that and he's gonna take the hit. But we'll find out what that does later. <sighs> As you're you leap out of the shadows and slice at his throat area where it might be, um, you watch as the skull pops off and clatters to the to the snow, landing safely in it, um, sinking into the into this mist snow. Um, leaving behind sort of the spinal cord poking out from where his body is. And then Silencer sort of falls over. And you wait a second. Do you do anything in, in this second? So, he, so Edward went for the tree, Silas shot it. it, is it does he still look alive? Mm, it's hard for a thing without a head to look alive. He's not really I- moving. But he we, can't saw, really that. we saw we ha- saw a head in a well. That's true. And it is <laughs> yes. possible. This has been a day for talking head. Um, can consequences be invoked or are they just against me? They can be invoked. To walk up to the tree and try and spend my fate point to try and use and utilize the fire within me. Okay. To see if I can set fire to this tree. Holy shit! Channeling the fire of the curse, the, the woman in the well. This like, is amazing. Like Sarah, to try and you feel it start to bubble up inside of you and manifest in actual flames on your on your hands as you press it to the to the wood. You hear a <laughs> and this tree starts to shake. The the roots start to pick up and seem to wave like tendril like almost. And at this point. You hear a, 
from up above as you watch this large goose-like creature with a feathery mane <laughs> land snow getting kicked up this monster courtesy of of our lovely house here silas wood um landing knocking lysandra away from the tree but you dealt a hefty blow to him at that point you do know the true trouble aspect of the antler king fire is my undoing and my enemy yes <laughs> um, as you watch these flames start to flicker across this this wood um the source of its uh, of its power um and sir edward you look over at this antler as this beast lands next to you or vaguely next to you this skull sort of rises from the mist and you're now staring at this snow golem like uh, creation of the antler king and it stands nine feet tall it's very skinny but it does stand nine feet tall can i invoke a trouble sure what trouble are you invoking uh afraid of the light the sudden fire okay that i wasn't <laughs> expecting sure <laughs> which uh allows me to uh turn out the lights uh i shadow jaunt back into the shadows okay away from the light Okay, so very quickly, as you watch this large, nine-foot-tall, skinny antler beast uh, rise in front of you, you <gasps> disappear into the shadows with a very quick... Uh, leave behind Luther uh, and Silas, who stand sort of at the cusp of this clearing. Uh, Lysandra, who once stood near the throne of the Antler King, blown back by both the trees pushing her back and this large goose beast landing... Um, at this point, we are in technically combat as two beasts are attacking you. Um, I'm going to say this goose thing goes first, and then we'll decide who goes after that. Um, just keep mark of if you've gone for this round or not. Um, so this feather mane that lands down, um, you've learned a little bit about it. My tail ends with my tail. That's his trouble aspect. Um, so he lands this creature, and the closest one to him is probably going to be Luther. I think at this, honestly, because Sir Edward is gone. Um, it lets loose a... And it's going to try and swipe at you as it lands, it stands bipedal. Um, however you'd like to, to, to try to avoid, it's going to try and use its fight uh, against you. So you can use whatever defense you think is apt. Cool. Awesome. I love rolling that. Beat a two. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to kind of dive forward like between its legs. Okay, uh, that sounds like an athletics. Yeah, that's a that's a negative two. A negative two, awesome. <laughs> so what you can do, you can either take a do a fate point and bump it up, or re-roll. You can always re-roll, or take the hit. Mm. Up to you. I think I'll I'll burn a fate, and then. Okay. Uh, what aspect are you going to tie it to? Uh, let's see here. Covering. Uh, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna use um, always covering Silas as a back, and just kind of. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, think uh, think better of my actions and just uh, kind of try to run towards it. Okay. Yeah, I'll say you've, you've probably seen Sir Edward try a particular move and it not work out super well, but you've ran the numbers. You've you've drawn the diagrams. You know you're like, wait, this way. Wait a lean minute. to the left. Um, as you, you lean dive out of the way, sure, Sherlock Holmes-ish. <laughs> um, and you're able to do that plus two or a reroll. Um, it is at a two, though. So you're at a minus four difference. So it's up to you. Right now, it's succeeding with style, though. So it's going to really kick your ass if you don't do anything. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll do a re-roll. Okay. Oh, no. That's better. A zero is better than a negative two. Better. Um, so that, so it's it only has a, a two difference. Um, so as its claws rake against you, go ahead and mark off your number two stress box for me. Um, as you, you dive out of the way, um, stress is more of the physical stress of a battle. It's not really you taking on damage or anything. So we're not going to particularly harm Luther. It's just a pretty hard blow to avoid. Um, at that point, I think 
Uh, Luther, I think we should see what how you react next. Um, and then you choose whoever goes next after you. Uh, so I, I react to what just happened or? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you want to, or you can, you can uh, help in any way or, or anything like that. You can create some advantages if you like. Mm -hmm. okay. What would Luther do in this situation as this large eight foot tall beast is sort of honking at him with a large bill uh, and mane flowing underneath their skin? What a strange should, creature. Uh, definitely like pluck a feather off its tail. <laughs> you can certainly try to do that. Mm, I uh, I don't think so. I'll... <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just um, I'll grab my bag, uh, the bag of um, the rest of my those the uh, uh, black balls. Mm -hmm. uh, toss them over to Silas. Okay. Um... I'll say it's creating an advantage. Go ahead and roll shoot for me, Luther. As you try to try to aim <laughs> over to Silas. This could go horribly wrong. Um, I say to, to be able to throw it at him really well. During this, be an average thrower. Get a one. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Oh, buddy. A minus two. So you can succeed at a major cost, fail, or do some fate points. It's up to you. Mm. The power is in your, it's in your possession. I know exactly what's going to happen, though. I know whatever you decide. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll burn a fate again. And then... <laughs> okay. Just to, just to re-roll here. Okay. What aspect are you tying it to? Uh, tr tr covering, trying, trying to cover Silas's bag. Okay, just sort of draw attention away from. I'll, I'll allow that. Go ahead. A zero. So you're, you're down one. I don't think any, any there's aren't any aspects in play for anyone to help each other either. So I you, have no wow. fate left. Wow. <laughs> I'll, I'll spend my last fate point. Oh, help from the shadows. How are you going to help them? Oh, not, never lead Luther astray. Okay, go on and spin it. I think I know how we're going to flavor this. As Luther, you throw these beads, um, immediately you realize they're going wide. And uh, knowing if they're rocked in any way, they're going to explode. And they're probably going to kill Silas. As you... <laughs> <laughs> and as, uh, before you even have a chance to yell out, watch out, you watch a hand sort of come out of the shadows, grasp them, and underhand toss them to Silas and disappear into the shadows once more. As you know, Sir Edward would never let you fail like that. Exactly. Silas, <laughs> Silas you catch them. Um, I'm gonna create the aspect um, for you. Uh, one good fire shot, I guess. Sums it up pretty well. Um, you've got just enough for, for one really good flame explosion shot, Silas. Um, I think at this point, Luther, you can decide who do you go to next. You can either go to Silas, Edward, Lasara, or the Antler King. It's up to you. Well, let me check who you're Silas? <laughs> He's going to check who you're pointing at. <laughs> you know who I'm pointing at. <laughs> All right. Let's go with Silas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Silas, after catching these beads, and I assume you tie them to an arrow, it doesn't take that much yeah, time. You just, like, just like I imagine they're kind of like a bolo, so I just kind of like bolo. Yeah, bolo. I was imagining the same thing. Um, so I, like it, I just so I imagine I was facing Goose Lion. Mm -hmm. I say, Luther, get out of there, because I did, and I turn around over uh, Lucera's shoulder, notch and shoot at the Antler King. Okay, at his throne or his like snow golem. At, at his throne. I'm, the, okay. I, I have now. fire. I have fire. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't change now. I can't change now, but... How, or I guess, how, what is the distance between uh, It's them? It's negligible. doesn't even matter. Okay. Well, I guess then, realistically, I want to try and get as much explosion as possible, I think would be a fair response. Like, if we're fighting two different things, I wouldn't be aiming at one or the other. I'd be trying to get it... Where I can get sort of in between, yeah. Okay, the, like the point, the at the average area. Sure. Yeah. Um, in that case, I'm going to roll for both of them then, because they're both going to try and resist. 
Okay. Um, so you go ahead and roll shoot for me. Um, and you have that plus, they have that one good fire shot as a plus two, if you so desire. Um, I'm going to roll for Antler King first. Wish I had a fate point to use it. Um, no, it's a free boost. It's a free, oh, you can oh, use that. Fantastic. Yeah, it, it's one free invoke. Um, so that's a negative two. It's a negative one plus four. Math, three. Um, okay. And then a lot of numbers to remember. Uh, great. That's way easier. Okay. So you have to beat a three and a five. Okay. I won't tell you which is for which one, but holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> a six. And I will use the one good f- fire shot. To bump it up to an eight? <laughs> Because this, this is, this is oh, the fucking no. shot I have. I mean, it wouldn't make sense anywhere else. Uh, all right. <laughs> kill him. Kill him with fire. No. Um, I've got one fate point left. No. No. You're in the forest. There's a dense snowfall. <gasps> I'm going to add a minus two uh, to your to your roll. Or a plus two to his roll, I guess. Yeah. Um, for the Antler King in particular. Um, and that's still Tizer. Yeah, that does tie it. Um, so we're, we're at an eight. Eight. <laughs> Antler King. In the chat, I'm still click clogger. In the chat, that looks like a baseball game or something score. <laughs> that it was seven. I thought the Antler King rolled a five. Oh, yeah, sorry. Seven. Seven versus an eight. Antler. Um, and then Featherman. <laughs> Featherman has four fate points because you guys haven't fought them yet. Oh, yeah. Um, so. <laughs> okay, this is perfect. This is the perfect time to use this. They're gonna use their one stunt as you let loose these, this arrow and it whizzes through the air and sinks in the ground and that waits that one second you're anticipating. As it explodes, the antler king tries to bring up some bramble to try and block it, but they're encapsulated by this fire and you hear a as it echoes around, flames lapping at it. The feather main though, as soon as it feels fire, it <laughs> and it's gonna use its stunt. My goose is cooked. No, come on. Or... <laughs> yes. I was gonna say that. I'm convinced oh. it's that that it runs on puns now. I was gonna say <laughs> it's that. Funny. It's best when it runs on puns. Um, I'm sorry. I, it was best to use whenever you were gonna use it, but this no, is the great. only time I can no, use that's it. Fa- that's fantastic. Once procession, um, it can let out a mighty roar and attempt to escape by sprouting its wings again. So um, whoever would like to resist um, can all roll notice, but it's gonna try and escape uh, this fight and just fucking leave you behind as you <laughs> set it on fire. Would my danger sense account for this? Or should um, I roll? Yeah, I'd say roll for it. It's not really tempting to harm you in this, in this okay. instance. I'm gonna try notice, try and see, I guess, if okay. see this. See if I can. See if you can track it. See if I can uh, track it, catch it, see where it's going. Okay. Um, anyone who would like to is able to. You gotta beat a four. So all of you got a four, which means you meet it, you tie. Um, so in that instance, you succeed at a minor cost. Are you? You're able to discern where they're going. Um, but something sort of caught you off guard, and I think the only way I can. The only, the only disadvantage I can think of during this is you watch them sort of sprout these wings and with a large snow kicking up, this mist aura emanating from it, it leaps over several of these trees and lands with a probably like a couple of yards away. Uh, <laughs> but it, it starts heading back into town in that, in that general direction oh, um, as, it, as it's running from all of you. Um, the Antler King, though, did not fare as well. Um, as almost as if I planned it, I did not. None of the creatures, except for one, are really great at physical stuff, and you've dealt a massive blow to it. As you, So, Silas, this explosion sort of <laughs> rocks this large oak tree. It <laughs> groans to the side. Its roots sort of <laughs> landing, snow kicking up once more as flames start to catch and f- lick at the bark 
um, sort of reigniting the, the, the cinders of where Lysandra, or Lysara touched, lighting this tree aflame like it's on gas, like it's with doused in gasoline. And you hear this, no, no, the, the snow golem tries to race towards you um, and starts grasping at Luther, at, at, your, um, at your clothes, but it starts, it soon melts as its skull sort of, uh, uh, please, no, not again. And it lands into the snow. And you watch as mist slowly starts to rise up. Sir Edward, what, what are you going to do? All right. So as the the goose is flying away, <laughs> um, <clears throat> as this explosion is happening, so mm-hmm. this is an amazing scene. Um, I'm jumping shadow to shadow up the trees as it's leaving the treetops. And I want to jump on the goose's back. Okay. Sure. <laughs> May, or like str- like jump out of the shadows from the top of the trees in the moonlight. You can see the silhouette of me in the moon. I and fucking I love stab, that. And I stab this. Yes. Uh, roll, roll fight, please. Please, oh God, roll fight and kick its ass because that sounds incredible. Like E.T., but with gooses and swords. Um, oh. And although I want you to succeed, I do have to roll against it, unfortunately. Uh, oh my God. Beat a five. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm falling. I'm falling. Uh, I'm falling. You, you do sort of um, appear in the moonlight. Still same image. The camera sees you. It's your own form in front of this like 95% full moon. I, I miscalculated um, the velocity of the goose. Yeah, yeah. If only you had Luther with you. <laughs> as, as you, as you, you come down with, with this boon sword and into the snow as this large beast looks back at you or stops, looks back at you and goes, <laughs> and runs away, uh, barreling through these trees, uh, several of them being pushed back um, as it makes its way back towards Bramsby. Damn, I forgot to recalculate for its wingspan. Just get after it! <laughs> uh, Luther, you're left with this large, with, with this deer antler skull at your feet. Um, and as soon as you watch uh, this tree start to go flame. The three of you remaining, whoever is whoever are still in that clearing, can see um, what what looks to be like souls leaving this tree. Um, all of them male in some in some capacity, um, older or fatherly type. Um, as uh, yeah, those are the only souls that would be in there because they weren't using they weren't using the kids. But you do see several of the bodies that were making this pathway um, sort of shift, and one of them slowly starts to rise up, and you hear. It, Mom. As Sir Edward chases after this feather mane. Um, who's doing what? Ed, Ed. Keep up. You, you got it, Master. Is is it look sufficiently dead, the Antler King? Yeah. Um, I'm not voicing it because I don't want to, but they're screaming the entire time and they're pleading to not go to the flames once more and they seem to be echoing. I think, Lasara, you're getting the brunt of it. Um, is start this, and I think you dispelling that curse into that tree, you can remove that uh, consequence from you as well. Yes, um, but I think that's, I think that's chilled, fair. Chilled to the bone again. Uh, no, no, that's <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a big bonfire with them. They're no longer chilled to the bone. I um, probably to no one in particular. Uh, Stylus would probably say he won't be pining for any legs any longer. Jesus Christ, <laughs> Sarah, so. Looks up, she's sort of like cracks her hands over her ears, hearing this horrible screaming. Sees that, like, there's a child who is. She goes, Does anyone see that ghost child? Do I Pointing see over, you see, you see two more sort of rise up. They look to be like they're covered in this wooden mud coffin almost. Um, as they rise up, you hear several, Mom! Zombie Mom. children. Someone needs to kill the zombie children. One by one, all of them start to rise up. <laughs> They're everywhere. I, I, I grab Lasara by the shoulder. Do they look dead or incorporeal to me? You can't really see them. They are, they're like in this bramble... Monsters. Look at them! Br- bramble sort of coffin or, or sleeping bag almost. So you can't really see their faces. I go up to them. They're monsters. Stay there. Everywhere. 
stay there. And I go, and then I will check them Don't out. Don't get too close! Um, so I think at this point, we're kind of out of combat right now, which means... Um, Sir Edward, you get a fate point. Luther, you get two fate points because I spent two on you. Um, Lasara, you get one because I spent one on you. And Silas, you get two because I spent two on you. If I'm if I'm recalling correctly. The and... fate point could have been helpful a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're chasing after them. So you're no longer in combat. So I, that's my fun little getaway. Um, so as you near, I have four fate points for the game itself. Those are, for, those are from the monsters. They're depleted. I think at this point, guys, it's a grim, dark fantasy world. I think, Lasara, you see this and you retreat into this sort of, you can't discern nightmare from reality at this point. The, all this bad stuff that's been happening, they have to be zombie children. They have to be ended to sort of purge this land of the curse. So I'm, I'm going to offer a fate point um, to cause you to try and use the trouble aspect to start to maybe start burning some of these kids or killing some of them. So you can either pay, pay one back to block it, or you can accept it right now. Up to you. I'm going to accept it. Okay. And it's, hard. it's not really... <laughs> that's why people don't like us. It's because we do the, the hard choice. Yeah. And the, unless Lasara sort of reaches in the nearest... Goes to the nearest child and goes, like, grabbing, like, knife about like... <laughs> See, they must die. They must die again. Like, we must get rid of the monsters. Let's get rid of the monsters. And is going to attempt to kill a child. All right, cool. This is what I wanted. Great. How, how are you going to kill him? How are you um, going to kill this baby girl? Wait, wait, do I still have fire? You don't have fire within you. There's still no. fire on the tree, though. Oh, no. I'd like to throw the small child into the fire on the tree. Okay. So as you throw this fire, throw this child, roll. Fire kills them. We know fire kills them. Roll physique, please. And I'm going to roll for something else within this scene. We'll get to Sir Edward and Luther as they're chasing after the Feather Man in a second. Okay. Uh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, that's not good at all. A kid might die today. Oh, a kid's gonna fucking die today. Do I have any? <laughs> do I have any? Could, was there anything I could have done to try and use an aspect to try and prevent her from doing that, or is it too late? Yeah, you you could definitely step in step in the way. I I um, would try and do what I did before, and I and I, I uh, using my like I said I would uh, my uh, never abandon Lasara. I say mm -hmm. I'd try and do it again. Look at me, I'm what's real. These kids aren't dead. You can trust me. You could, you've always been able to trust me. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Hmm. Roll. Roll whatever social skill you would like. I think so. Provoke rapport. Um. Actually, this seems more like an empathy thing to me. Go ahead and roll empathy. Um. Against Lasara's roll of physique, which was what exactly like, a zero. I, I, I would have, I mean, I'd argue that, like, I'm not, I'd be very stern about it, like, just trying to get mm. her to snap out of it. I'm not trying to coddle her. I'm like, look at me. I'm real. Okay, some more forceful. Then definitely provoke them. Because, yeah, knowing her, she, her mind doesn't change easily. So mm -hmm. I wanted, I need to, yeah, be provoking. Jesus, mother of God, a six. Um, so. <laughs> I'll say that creates the advantage of uh, sort of able to discern what's real or not for Lasara. Um, so Lasara, it's up to you. I think it, is, it comes down to you. I can't tell you which way or not. You have a plus two if you'd like to. Go ahead and roll a will for me. Um, and you have a plus two if you so desire. I think I will use that. I think I think I might say. <laughs> oh, negative one. I think I'll use that plus two. I, okay. I, like, it gives it to a one. I don't want this to happen anymore. 
What have I done? A plus two brings you to a one. What she needs. I'm, right, I'm I'm crunching numbers. Uh, yeah, I think uh yeah, I think you have to be a one, an average, to be able to get to be able to stop yourself. That still succeeded at minor cost. Something bad does still happen, and because I think because Sir Edward is not in the scene, Sir Edward, what is something minor that could cause a mishap here? Can I use another fate point? <clears throat> you have another fate point? Mm-hmm. What fate? What what aspect are you going to use? I have. I I would just try and say, like, yell, snap out of it. My words as sharp as arrows. Okay, I'll accept that. Go ahead and pay the fate point. That bumps you up. So you succeed with no cost. So, Sarah, if you so desire, you can drop this child. So she's kind of half lunging, hearing Silas shouting and calling her. She, oh my god! Let's go and so pushes the child back away from the fire and just like looks between the child and the fire and Silas and just. I was really ready for you to maim that child. <laughs> yeah, I. I wanted it to happen, and then I realized what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? Do you see me? What have I done? Do you see me? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm real. Say that. You, Say you're that real? Back. Children are not dead. Yes. Children Good. are not dead. From Good. the side, the two of you hear a, You saved them. You look over to your left. You see this smoky visage, something that we saw before. Lasara, you knew of it, but you weren't quite sure what it was. The thing that was tracking the click clacker. You see the visage of this um, uh, man, smoky man with a large duster on their hat. Um, this is courtesy. Uh, I, think, I think this was our own Zukalu that sent us this, this creature. Um, who, who, me? Yes, they have the skeletal face. And this large duster on um, with skeletal hands and black robes or black attire. Um, they stand before you and they're sort of ethereal. And you watch their mouth sort of clanks open with like, thank you for saving them. Um, immediately, you know what this is. Um, I, I think the two of you would know more than any of them. Probably Lasara more, honestly, because this is a specter of an abusive father. Uh, wanting redemption. It's a shadow guest. Um, sort of like a... Horrible nightmare creature. Yeah, another horrible nightmare creature, honestly. Um, you watch as they go over to several of the kids and start peeling back this bark skin. Um, they look up at you um, and say, I could not save them all. Sir Edward, Cross, <laughs> Luther Hawkins. As you guys are chasing after this feather mane, is heading towards town. You are nearing this farm. Um, as it's <laughs> running, running towards, you hear a, what the hell is that? Uh, from several of the guardsmen. All right, several, several of the, the mob that was trying to hunt the, the girl down. What are you guys doing? How, do you guys, how are you guys gonna deal with this? <laughs> how on earth? I just imagine like Edward like sword overhead like chasing after it. Luther like taking notes behind, just like <laughs> <laughs> Pro- proper sword technique. It's not proper sword technique. <laughs> Get stuffed, uh, bird. <laughs> L- Luther, stop! Stop looking at me! Uh, stop! Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, as he as he looks away, uh, I, I I get the I, I jump into the shadows. Okay, with a you dive into the shadows of one of the corn stalks as you're um, now in the shadow realm. I like to imagine it's black and white, and you're able to move back and forth between these shadows as you're snaking on the ground. Um, Luther, you, you look back where Sir Edward was, and he's now gone. As you guys are chasing this large creature, that is, um, I made this motion like they were bounding on four legs. They're still bipedal. Let that be known. They just have goose feet, and their feet are. <laughs> like slapping on this stone or on this snow. I just imagine like a giant mama duck like waddling across the street with her chicks but like sands. Yeah. The- <laughs> yeah. It's disturbing. I feel like Luther would know what to look look for while following me. 
Because mm-hmm. it would be like shadow slightly increasing in size in a direction. Yeah, and I think we established earlier that Luther has a has a keen eye, um, especially for darker entities really. So wouldn't be like I disappeared. He he kind of knew what happened and he just continues yeah. following the shadow that's Yeah, I think that's fair. Leaping forward. Yeah. Luther. Uh or Luther Sir Edward, as you guys are chasing forward. It does seem to stop. Uh, this feather mane seemed to stop at um, the Bonewood District. It's sort of the northern part um, of the of Bremsby, um, and seems to sort of backpedal back and forth, looking for entrance in. Um, and it it soon sees several people who have gathered in and like the edge of town, and it lets loose like, <laughs> what the blazes, as it starts to make its way towards them. What are you guys doing? <sighs> so it's, it's is it like perched up on like a roof overlooking no it no it is it is not agile enough for that it is still on the ground all right okay uh, i i can i can go distracted while you uh sneak up and uh, this is gonna fucking die <laughs> <laughs> oh no no not so last words not not yeah, so i do that innocent luther <laughs> A child is gonna die, not the <laughs> not the one we thought. <laughs> if the dice foretell it, that's what's gonna happen. So, uh, Luther, it sounds like you're gonna distract. How are you gonna distract him? Okay, I'm. I'm going to. Red. I'm gonna try to provoke it. I'm gonna go. Okay. Hey, you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go ahead and roll. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, beat a two. Oh, you got a two. Cool. Um, so whenever you're trying to create an advantage like that, um, you 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 don't create the advantage of it being distracted. You create a boost um, for someone else to use or utilize. Um, actually, for create advantage, it's you cause it to be distracted, but not in the way you intended. So. Hmm. Since Silas and Lasara aren't in this combat, I'm gonna ask: uh, In what way does this uh, Luther shouting out to distract it cause it to sort of not go in the right direction they were they were intended? Aside from them being the focal point of their attention, is there any I, way anything you can think of? I imagine it like crashes so into a run on boarding. Like, that it what? Now, it it trips like, over the well. Crashes, Oh, there you go. I like that. Oh. I, like that. I like that. Oh, that's the worst thing. Okay. <gasps> oh, the trench. <laughs> yes, the spitting trench. <laughs> well, that might kill it. That might kill it, though. I think um, I like the idea of it of it sort of turning quickly. It's not a very agile thing. So maybe you do cause it to be distracted as it <clears throat> turns to look at you, but it loses its footing. And it crashes into one of the buildings, comes back up, and it's now covered in this sort of uh, splintered wood, um, splintered wood and stone that's now fallen down. Um, and it steps forth, and you see there are people inside who are now crushed by this stone, causing a little bit of trouble. You guys will, might have to save them if you so desire. You don't have to. Um, but now I, I think at this point it's not distracted, uh, but because a lot of people are yelling, it's now scared and cornered. Okay. Um, so y- you don't get a free invoke of it, um, but you can use a fate point to sort of help in any way, or to to get the plus two if you like. Sir Edward, what are you gonna do? Are you ready? Uh, oh, I'm so ready for whatever you have planned. All right, so leaping from the shadows, like almost like a Kobe move. I'm going to pluck a feather from its back and jam it into its mouth. Okay, <laughs> so that sounds insane. <laughs> um, go ahead and roll burglary. Ooh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> A roll we weren't expecting. That's the only one I can think of that might apply. Um, like let me roll for it. And it's going to try and resist. It's got pretty great. Um, really? Really? <laughs> so it's a, uh, so a three. Beat a three. All right, so I rolled a zero, but I have plus okay. two. For, I have plus two for the attack okay. from jumping from the shadows for okay. the free invoke, and then the the scared and cornered 
if Luther, if you'd like to spend your fate point, <laughs> the second plus yeah. two. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I would I would end with a a four or yeah a four. All right, I'm gonna burn a fade here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, this is so hard for him to do, but he's going to toss his notebook <gasps> at the at <gasps> the, oh my god at the 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 thing's uh, uh, eyes to try to distract it. Holy shit. I say you just do it because you're using a fate point. So you watch as Luther, I think you grab hold of your notebook and you your hand caresses over the front of it for a moment as you you look up as at this feather man. Plop out of the shadows. Yeah, like, it's on super slow motion. You already I imagine, knew it. So I imagine my heart will go on like is playing. <laughs> <laughs> as your hand rolls over this notebook, um, I'm going to interject my own little story point here. I think the notebook has um, your father's name inscribed on it, and it was given to you as you hold it and look up at this feather man to save your friend, your mentor. You reel back and throw this notebook into the air. It's pages flipping. That's what pages sound like, I guess. Um, onto this feather man's eyes, beak. It covers his vision as it <laughs> trying to swat at it. It's mouth wide open for Sir Edward to take a little bit, a big tuft of its tail, jump over it. Roll in athletics for me, Sir Edward. Oh no. I was. This, you thought that is, was it? This is not fair. <laughs> athletics. <laughs> athletics. Come on. Are, are you sure it's athletics? I'm 100% positive. You thought that was it? Are you sure it's athletics? You were, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it's not crafts or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Resources. <laughs> oh, God. I don't want to look. Oh, goodness. A negative two. Oh. Oh. I'm, I'm, rolling it, I'm rolling it against it. Holy shit. You meet it. <gasps> so you succeed at a minor cost. And because I don't think anyone has any fate points in the scene... Well, we're not there. Um, right. So you leap up. You see the notebook flying through the air. It collides with this uh, Feathermane's beak and eyes covering it. It's mouth wide open. Take the tuck and shove it deep in. Go on. And it maims my arm. As yeah, I that's back. exactly what I was going to do. It <sighs> maims your arm as you pull back. It's sharp ridges inside. And as you fall back, you fall backwards. You land in the building that it had collapsed, that it had collapsed with its body. Go ahead and take, um, go ahead and take two physical stress, or three physical stress. So mark your first box and your second box, or your third box if you have a third box. Yes. For you. I don't know if it does. Actually, you're Luther, so you you only have a two and one. So both your physical boxes are gone. Um, as you land with a. <laughs> crush onto the stone i guess that's that more squishy than i wanted uh, more of like a, that's better um your head gonks on some, on some of the stone as you look over and you see a small um a small form of a person huddled underneath this um the stone this beam um, their father standing above holding it up you see them look over and say father as your vision slowly fades out Meanwhile, that feather mane is <laughs> and it sort of tilts back and on his back legs, leans back and looks like it's going to fall back on Sir Edward, but it spins and <laughs> lands with a large thud into the snow as it too starts to disperse into some mist. And Luther, as you run forward and see Sir Edward blood pooling from their head, from their gonk on the head. You, we go over to Silas and Lasara, back with that strange, strange shadow guest who has now freed all the children. Um, it looks to you, and with one final word or two, it it says, "Thank you for doing what I could not, but I will roam now, forever." As it slowly fades over this snow, turning away from you. Um, and going pretty much deep into this uh, now burnt 
oak tree disappearing from your vision. So all these kids are now around you. What would you guys like to do? We're nearing the end, so we're going to do a quick little wrap up. But. So I guess we're responsible for these kids. We're not keeping them. We should take them back to town. No, we'd be terrible parents. <laughs> so yeah, we'd, we'd bring them back to town. I mean, we don't have to lose them. Maybe. <laughs> He, he's smarter than Edward. So yeah. I think Take the uh, down. As, as you say, like terrible parents, one of them comes up to you and like sort of pulls on your cloak, says, I'm hungry. And we cut to the day after. I'm going to change the music really quickly. We're going to do a quick little wrap up. I feel like we deserve it. We earned it. Um, so it's the day after. All of you are within this tavern known as the the trickster's chalice um inside the bar uh there's not many people um they're all outside you watch as snow starts to melt off of the windowsill um that you are that you all reside in so edward is in a bed their leg propped up broken their arm propped up broken and a bandage over their head but they're very much alive as, as no! luther, as luther Luthor. sits next to them Send a letter, master. Send a letter. Yes, sir. Uh, we won, and then I pass back out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I think we we follow that camera through the went through the walls to the next room with Silas and Lasara. Um, you want to give a quick little bur- blurb of you guys sort of wrapping up, I guess, um, if you weren't with Sir Edward. We, uh, we need. I had a dream. I, I think that's all we need. That's all we need. Can, can we do like an end credit scene? <gasps> Till next time. <laughs> with, I want to do it like an end credit scene where Silas is at the spit and trench. It's like, freaking spit. Yeah, I think we uh, we, we end on a... Uh, I think Silas, you enter and you, as you... What next? And Lasara lets out, I had a dream. And we cut to black. And then the credits roll. We like to thank everyone and so, so on and so forth. And then Whoever stayed for the after credits, we see <laughs> the spit and trench in all its glory, lush green grass now, where once where snow once was. Pig, the pig corpses are gone. The deer corpses are gone. Horse corpses are gone. Blood no more. Um, the town of Bransbury is alive once more. Sun is beating down on on this town, and even some travelers have been able to come through. Um, it's been about three days now as you're sort of recuperating. You can't really go on without Edward um, still bandaged up. But we see Silas standing next to the trench. We, we see them c- crack their neck, crack their fingers. And all we, he all we hear is a, I think we hear a, <laughs> Silas, do you have a one-liner really quickly? Oh, I, oh I have a one-liner. I, I think. Oh, suggested. <laughs> yes. Over, oh, um, off, off screen, you hear, you hear Luther say, uh, d- don't forget to stretch as well. <laughs> I think on that, we hear a... Oh, right. And Very good. Very so good, you, you start stretching, and we hear a... <laughs> as, you, as you sort of gather up your ammunition, and then we cut. And that's when the movie ends, everyone. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching this crazy adventure. It's obnoxious um, people that clap in cinemas. <laughs> yes. Um, I do have a quick little quick, quick little announcements before we say truly goodbye. Um, so we like to thank, thank everyone for sticking through our crazy one shot. Um, and for all that we do on Twitch, basically we got a lot of, we got a lot of uh, followers, which is great. We're super, way closer to getting that uh, giveaway thing. Um, if this at all interests you, make sure to check out the panels below. Join our Discord. We play with all these lovely people. Um, we run community games all the time. It's where we all come together to laugh, cry, learn about D&D, and also some other systems like Fate, um, and plan RPGs with fantastically run, fun and dedicated people like House, like Crackery, like Zookaloo, like Tiss, like myself. And don't forget to follow our Twitter where we post all our announcements. We hope to see all of you in our Discord during Party Fell uh, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we'll see our party travel some oranges across the county. And if we don't see you, we'll feel the worst. Thanks again. (laughs) Thanks, everyone. Thank you.